fucking thing sucks. We'll do it live. Okay. Merry Christmas. Fuck yeah. And welcome back to the show, guys. It's Cruising with Steak, live Christmas night. Here we are. Some of my favorite people in the world are in here hanging out with me tonight. That's Wonderful cool. night. We got James Cruz, the man. Beautiful. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes, we got Jerry Cthulhu. That's nasty. <laughs> we got Nish here. I'm strictly dickly. <laughs> yes, she is. And we got Joe Roop. I don't have a sound effect. Here, let me find one. <laughs> yes. You can have this one, dude. Only John. James has one. That's appropriate. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's out of control. Yeah, it's out of control. It's crazy tonight. It is. Oh, dude, I'm just this is this is wonderful. I'm so happy oh, to my. be here. Sorry. No, it's fine. Oh, you got so my Mister, was I little... wasn't going to be on the. I wasn't going to do it because I, it almost drunk. got canceled. I did get incredibly drunk today, but uh, Jerry was like, "You got 90 minutes to sober up," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so I got I got my shit together. <laughs> what were yeah. you drinking? Whiskey. Well, I started out as beer, and then there were some shots of whiskey came in. Ooh, bad combo. That's that, bad. That's what that, and then I was kind of getting a little spinny, and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the things... Yeah, the spins are usually when it's over. But, but, but we bounce back. We bounce back, and we're here. But if you're in bed and it's spinning, you can always count it as exercise. Oh, that's <laughs> a, <I> like that. <laughs> or the death spin. <laughs> Like I'm always like, is oh, this yeah. it? Yeah. Is this, <laughs> this is it. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm spinning out people. I'm ready. Yeah, come, I used to God, I used to do that so much when I was younger. Like I'd get so trashed and then like, you know, you'd 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 smoke and you'd get the instant spins, like once you get high. Yep. So it's like, dude, I, I would force myself to puke so much because that'd be like the only way to get out of it. I'd say, Nope, I'm not gonna be able to stop this. Walk over. I hated puking so much. I would get completely so ill. You know where you're in the cold sweat. Oh yeah that there. and like i would write out and of course inevitably you puke anyway uh-huh. and you always feel 100 percent better exactly so something in my gene says suffer bitch suffer. <laughs> I, I have not thrown up suffer i've not thrown up since 1993 are you serious wow. and then before wow. that the only time i threw up was in 1985 that's like a that sign not- that that's a Seinfeld like episode. The- there was that Seinfeld episode where Jerry's like, I've been thrown up since 1983. And like, they made He's a whole episode puker. out of it. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's, let's That's air some old school shit too. Like when you can start naming back decades. Yes. You know what I'm well, saying? That's old school shit. Two times ago when I puked was on March 18th, 1985. <clears throat> I got really fucked up on St. Patrick's Day. I think we were drinking Long Islands. That'll do it. <clears throat> Yeah, and I was driving to work, and the, my wife was with me, and she was making me laugh. And I was doing that, you know, you know, when you're about ready to puke, you like, don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> any any movement is gonna make it explode. Yes, right. So yeah, so she's like, why not? You're gonna puke, and I in my car all over the dashboard. It was oh my like, god. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm, I'm I, afraid to throw up. I'm afraid to puke. Me too, me too Joe. Well, I, I don't like it. That's when I decided never to drink that much again. Jerry, have you ever sharded and thrown up at the same time? Oh no, yeah. no. Dude, oh, yeah. man! <laughs> that's, Double that's duty. The extra. Yeah, that's like food poisoning right there. We got it coming out both ends, and things are just getting insane. You need I to can be... claim it. I got it. Was a new year. Oh, it's that time of year. Yeah, I was visiting my, before he was my husband, my ex-husband, in Madison, Wisconsin. He had a band called Gandhi Bondage. And they had all taken acid and nobody told me. And so Scott takes this acid and then gives me plants to kiss, right? With it on his tongue. Oh, no. It's on my ass. Of course, you know, I'm into it. So I'm kissing him. I didn't even notice that there were, there, pro- there had to have been that paper between us, whatever. Yeah. So I go into high tripping. 
not knowing why. Everyone's it's a good time, good time, not knowing why. And let me just give you a little. Uh, so I had like a little like sixties dress on. I had white tights on with black fishnets over and go-go boots. So white tights Hot. and um. And so I'm freaking out. And eventually he tells me, but of course everyone is high on acid. And so I go to the truck. I I'm already challenged with dealing with people <laughs> anyway, sometimes at parties. And so I'm reading him the riot and then I get so sick. I go the bands, you know, it's a house band situation. I have to go behind the stage, which is in front of the bathroom. And so I crash in there for a while. And then Satan comes up out of me from both oh, ends. I go to puke. Yeah. I couldn't. I, it's not a party without <laughs> Satan. What I was he doing that. there? I had to puke. I'm like, oh my god, on acid. This is the worst experience ever. So you just oh, lose the colors. Oh. I couldn't even remember, imagine the colors. God, right? Remember, I'm high on acid, and I don't really know. And so I'm projectile puking. Because I don't have really a concept of my senses. And at that same time, I feel the warm running. Oh, <laughs> <I'm> like, <no. laughs> and my 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 boyfriend's guy at the time come, somehow got back there. So he witnessed part of it. And I'm shutting the door. I'm like, just leave me alone. So I take off the tights. This is this is the big girl in me. I take off the tights. I get in shower, get myself all cleaned up. I throw those fucking tights out the window, two story window into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there, there are, and they're distinct. They were white tights with black fishes around them. They were mine. Everyone saw me. And so there they and are, right thing. there in that snow white and that brown, <laughs> extremely grossness is just there. So then all of a sudden it became the thing to do for everyone to go out and observe them. <laughs> yes. Right? And then so they wrote Gandhi Bondage, wrote a song and put it on their CD. I think they put it on their, they have like two CDs called Scott and His Brilliance, Vomitous Dawn of the Shrew. <laughs> God, <laughs> that was my own um, to 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 that experience. Sharding that's that, that's got to be the worst trick, though. Like I've, I can honestly say I've never tripped without knowing that I was going to that experience. Like that's that's some dirty shit to pull on to on terrible. somebody. Oh my God, it was a terrible night. And then to have that is like the crowning yeah. jewel of it. Man, I mean, it was in the morning. I, I sure enough looked at those poopy tights you know it's so gross man yeah but it's that's a good story though you got a good story out of it Nish. Well, the, the show goes on the party went on yes. and the song was written and recorded yes. had you ever <laughs> tripped acid before then though oh yeah i had been a pro and i hadn't done it in years and years and years since so I you knew what it was at some well, point you started figuring it out right yeah, at some point I figured out I had been that something ha was going on. Yeah. I didn't know what, and that's Jeez. when you know Scott told me so. And then you know I was extremely pissed. Oh yeah, and in and, and rant mode for like a long on acid. I'm trying to think of what it would be like if you, you know, you never tripped acid before, Dude. ever. And somebody did that to you. That uh, you would oh. go crazy. Well, that's yeah, that's that probably where the freak out. That's probably where like a lot of freak out stories come from. Like people have. Yeah, well, I was their an shit. old pro at that point, and yeah. I freaked out. So yeah. I couldn't. Yeah, that know. would be insane. I'm glad I had been a bad girl. Was still was. That's that point. that's probably why people. You know, when people have like crazy religious experiences or crazy shit, maybe they're just tripping and don't <laughs> know it. Or just dropped acid on them and they didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I did acid. It, you know, in high school, they would hand out like sweet tarts with stuff on it. And, all the, and I mean, man, this is acid. And I'm like, well, how come it's not doing nothing? I can't tell you how many times I took stuff, <laughs> did anything. And then uh -oh. uh, I went to a rave party and finally got some acid from this chick. And she put it in my mouth in the bathroom from a dropper. You know, yeah. oh, she just like open your mouth. And I was like, yeah, I think this is real this time, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it lasted for like 12 hours almost. Yeah, that's it. Oh. I always loved it like that. Just from the dropper. It To, to me, no matter what, it, it's always a full night experience. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I've gotten some sketchy sugar cubes before, but uh, any other time it's just works. been uh, it's just been blotter paper and the paper's just been great. Oh, never had a problem with it. <laughs>
That's what he's looking for, blotter paper. Nope. Thank you. Nope. Yeah, the blotter. I've had that. I've had some of these 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 old gel tabs, like where they. Ooh, I've never had those. Yeah, they, yeah, they were black. Like, they were different colors. Things. Yeah, they, I mean, it, basically, it's liquid acid inside these little tablets. But uh, I had those before. I only did shrooms one time, and it was awesome. That lasts shrooms a long time. Yeah. yeah. Shrooms yeah. is good. Dude, that's going to be awesome. Great. That's going to be great. Like, they're they're making some serious progress with that, uh, getting it legalized right. for, like, medical use. Because, dude, that... Where? Uh, in, in California Canada? and stuff. No, no, oh. MAPS. The MAPS project and all that stuff, yeah. Because they're... Uh, dude, it's, it's super <laughs> beneficial for, like, people with PTSD or just trying to get over addiction or anything, you know? Like, it's... It'll, <laughs> yeah. it'll, 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 it'll change. It's super beneficial. Yeah. It says all the shroom heads that don't care about the people that have PTSD. Yeah, uh, it's super beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so medically oh. beneficial. I, hope, I can't wait till they legalize it. <laughs> why, it. Why is it so beneficial? What is it? Do? Uh, tweaks your brain. I don't know. Hmm. Tweaks. I mean, some I think it's just it's like I mean, rewire the the circuitry, like the neuro connection. Well, I know that for sure. I, Ayahuasca yeah. can do that. Like I've well, known people dude, who have gone I mean, in with I'm addiction. Just say that. Yeah. There's a show. If you're crazy, though, you can put your head in a blender to forget about stuff. Yeah, great, yeah. <laughs> totally. A big blender. It's it's like you know that trick. It's like, oh, my finger hurts. So take my mind off this pain. Or they break another finger. Yeah, just, just smash it. Yeah. Smash your leg. Wait, 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 wait. So if it's beneficial for people with PTSD or trauma or whatever, why would why isn't it beneficial for everyone? I mean, I'm sure it is. I've always found it beneficial. Right. Right. I, would no, think, I would think in the microdose faction fa- factor yeah, like yeah, oh yeah that's yeah. A, that's the big thing in silicon valley now people uh yeah. microdose and shrooms they grind them up and it, Fuck they, okay. it they're out. taking shrooms yeah dude they're not they're like oh yeah it makes me so much more creative i could stay focused all day rather than taking like an adderall or a xanax or something <laughs> The guys who set up the Church of the AI, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> Has anybody in this room done like real dimethyltryptamine? Nope. nope, no, nope, Nomad has. Yeah, Nomad's. I'm the only thinking one about I doing that. I know I'm not going to do acid anymore. I know that. Like, I just know it. But I would do shrooms. I wouldn't do acid. I w- yeah, no more LST for me. But I would do shrooms, and I'm working my way up, Joe, to that. I have like some weird control freak out about it. Well, I mean, I, I guess it's super hard to find, but so easy to make. I, I don't know. Yeah. There's well, that's two. another thing is finding it. I'm mm-hmm. not definitely not making it. And anything. finding a clean source, like, you yeah. know, somebody who didn't put any extra shit in there. Like, that's, yeah, that's yeah, tough. Same with that whole uh, ayahuasca stuff. Like, yeah. Well, right. that's, that, that's the DM, same. Yeah. Thing DMT's, kind of, DMT's basically just like a condensed a version of it. Yeah. 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 It only lasts like five, 10 minutes or something. Go to another planet, talk to some <laughs> clockwork elves and you're back. <laughs> uh, it Iowaska, scares me you can, though for some reason. Mm-hmm. You can make it safely. You can yeah. safely brew your own ayahuasca oh. with the right proper ingredients. Well, yeah. Like yeah. I was saying, there's a show, it's called Kentucky Ayahuasca. It's on like A&E or some yeah, shit. I saw that. I, I watched like a half hour of it. It was kind of interesting. It was more so about following the people around and their fucked up yeah, problems. Stories. Kentucky? Yeah, yeah. Rednecks uh, doing dimethyltryptamine. That's my yeah, stuff. Right no, there. well, yeah. no, that ayahuasca. That's what I'm saying. I think we were talking to uh, one time. We were. Oh, uh, actually, it was Birkenbach, Chris Birkenbach, about these altered, you know, practices and medicine, and even just a bunch of different stories. But we, we were talking about that once, and he's he brought up some some stories where that's killed people and shit. Like if it isn't wow. done right. Like, uh, great, that adds to my fear, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, yeah, I don't know. I think if you're gonna do it, go down, go down to South America, right? Go to the pros, dude. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. like, don't go to Joe, uh, Jim Bob's, uh, (laughs) yeah, but they've made it turn it into such a a consumer kind right. of circus yeah. now. That's what Yeah, there's a lot of fake mm-hmm. shamans out there now. Like, for now they're doing a TV show. Like they're a fake shamans. Yeah. Well, everywhere. that was uh, Sean Shameless uh, when when he went and uh, did yes. it. He did it in California. Like he just, he knew uh, like some guys down there that administered or something. Yeah, I mean, that's. I just don't, I, I don't want to do it because everybody's like, oh man, you go through this ride of puking and muscle aches and pains and it's, it's called the purge and i'm thinking that yep. sounds like the stomach flu i don't want to do that you yeah. know I don't wait want... i thought i didn't think everyone puked see that's another no. downside yeah no that's yeah, that's like 
I'm pretty sure that's that's one of the things like because yeah you do have you have to purge that out and everybody used to start puking and then that's when mother ayahuasca takes over shows you all your shit that you've had hidden though it's the same compound right so you only leave for like five minutes and then you come yeah but i hear that five minutes like on the other side can be like people living lifetimes and shit yeah like that like inception so it's five minutes here mm-hmm. but what is it there no like roy yeah like roy on non rick and morty yes <laughs> <laughs> you guys <laughs> yeah man i mean it's well that well who was uh garrett wearing a rick we, and morty shirt, by the way. Well, you said garrett lee on uh, <laughs> about a month or two ago and he made his own uh dmt That's awesome love that movie and did uh, he tell you how he made it uh did he may or may not know how to make it <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not i'm not exactly oh, sure but uh gotcha. yeah it was kind of like yeah a, allegedly yeah yeah allegedly he did but uh but yeah he said uh, that uh, he have some yeah he yeah. encountered uh he encountered those entities purposes only people the yeah. elves yeah he yeah he did he said he he t- there was there was guides on the other side that were telling him about all this shit he's got to do and i don't know it's it's crazy They're i mean yeah. really, so oh, there's dude. this youtube channel that just started called uh the Dreaming Jaguars and their buddies of mine are just listeners of the show and mm-hmm. they started their own YouTube channel and that's what they do. And they're from England and they're like the coolest guys ever. Normal dudes with families, jobs, whatever, but they go on these getaways and they go like out in the woods or whatever and they do dimethyl trip to me and all they do is talk about it. That's all wow. they do is just talk about what happened. You know, I'll have to they, tune in on that. Yeah, and they got two conflicting views. Like, Justin doesn't believe in anything. He's kind of like the atheist type, but he's exploring this. Versus Paul, he grew up, his parents were occultists, so he believes in all of it. So it's kind of cool to see the dynamic of it. Right. So place. the one that is, is an atheist, he's having these experiences, though. What, yeah, he's starting to change his mind about it. I imagine. Mm-hmm. I mean, that yeah. does open you up to other states of consciousness. Yeah, well, and oh, just yeah. the consistency. I went from full, full blown atheist to polytheist pretty quick. Really, yeah. like two years. Yeah, polytheist is that like could be anything? Could you met a bunch of different entities or whatever, or you could like, believe in anything? I mean, I, I yeah, you could pretty much believe in anything. Okay. The world so is you your went from atheist to go. Okay, there could be something or some things. I just don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, I went I, from like no. not believing in any paranormal shit at all like yeah very nuts and bolts scientific i was the same exact way materialistic worldview you know like no that's bullshit this is crazy like the only thing (laughs) that's real and then yeah mine just wait a minute so what happened that changed your minds or i I saw something in the sky oh okay what about you grant psychedelics psychedelics and uh and just uh just getting deeper into the weird of the world like the paranormal, the UFOs, occultism, just everything. Just looking. Because that's like that's a whole part of the world that like I didn't really explore much, you know? Like I, I was always aware of it and it was always like there, but I didn't go deep. Then once I started going deep, it was like, holy shit. Like it's pretty naive to think that, you know, everything's just explained by science. <laughs> pretty smart of Jerry and Nish to explore consciousness and dreams that way. Because you hear everybody's stories. And then you start putting stuff together, you know, mm-hmm. like I was, I was always woo though. Like nothing. I mean, things came to me. I think I told you this already joining with like my Sasquatch experience. Didn't think anything of it. Had experience. Now I'm like, yes, there's a Sasquatch. <laughs> so, but I was always open to possibilities. And I, I mean, I grew up in a cultist basically, it, it, you know, looking for the hidden when I say that. So yeah. search. Sure. For the hidden and what's re- not revealed to us, but also is in plain sight. So, yeah. and I just call that growing up with an open fucking mind. Yeah. Well, I still have a hard time believing in Bigfoot. People hate that, but I just, <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I mean, it could be very real. It's just in my mind when, when I sit down and I try to talk myself into believing in Bigfoot, I have such a hard time with it. Joe, I was I, with I you. I, it's not that I didn't believe in it. It just seemed it seemed a little crazy to me. And I'm already I've always been out there. So but I, I can tell you for me, it was the scariest experience of my life. I think twice now about Deep Woods. And now that I've had the experience that was visceral, visual, and psychic all at once, hard to describe. 
I'm, I, you know, I know those things exist. Okay. There's literally changed my whole worldview on Bigfoot and, and other, other things that kind of fall into that. There, there was this uh, recent episode of where, where did the road go with, uh, with Ren, Ren Collier was on there and he, they, him and Soraya were talking about some shit that kind of was blowing my mind about how maybe these things, it's all hypothesis. They come into an, our, our existence, but they decay at such a rapid rate. Like there's like, there's some form of like super entropy where the minute that they come in, they only have a, a short amount of time that they actually are existent in our reality. And then they just kind of disappear. And that would explain like maybe like smells, certain smells of like decay or sulfur, just, just certain things that people experience around them. Like it could just be like a quick flash. Like it's just flashes of another reality that we can see for a second and then it just disappears real quick. So it's like, there'd be no way to prove there's a Bigfoot or anything because it's only here for such a short amount of time and then just gone. But I, I wonder about I that. Know. After my experience now, I, the big, I could see that with a lot of other stuff, especially more apparition type stuff. But with the experience I had, uh, I think that they are actually coexisting with us. And I think that there's some sort of uh, ed, lack of a better way to term it. Reality overlay somehow okay. where they have the ability to affect what we're visually experiencing and may, and all around it, it, because my mind kept wanting to say this is a bear although i smelled skunk and immediately i'm like oh that's too pungent for a, st- a skunk but it's animal like and so immediately then i thought it's a pot field we're way in the woods right and then i came back to no this is down my back of my jaws both sides hormonal animal smell then all the hair and your, you know, the goosebumps, and then this huge fight or flight thing happens. And then I, I saw the physical, physical as I'm physical right now, as the trees were physical, as something else, you know, I saw it. And then, of course, I wanted to make it a bear, and I couldn't, my mind wanted to make it a bear, and I couldn't conceptualize it because of this overlay, this reality overlay of what's mm-hmm. possible. Right. And I wonder if there's a technology, an actual technology, whether it's a, an organic technology to keep things kind of shielded from other other beings. Like, um, you know, there are animals in the wild, like octopi, right? Look at how good they are at camouflage. Yeah, that is true. Or like, yeah, any kind of cephalopods or anything like that. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. When, hunt, when I grew up, my dad me hunting all the time. Animals alone could be 10 foot in front of you and not moving. And you the won't camouflage, see. right? Joe, it's amazing. Especially deer. I've seen them get up from laying. I'm sitting in a deer stand. I hated hunting by the way, but I went because my mm-hmm. dad wanted me to. Mm-hmm. And I would, they would just literally stand up from where they were laying. And I would look to the left and then look back to the right. And there they are. Like, what the hell? Where'd they come from? Cause they yep. just blend in the woods so well. I've experienced yeah. that too. And with the, when I lived in New Mexico, a mountain lion, I'm driving my truck off. I lived off grid and I'm going real slow over the rocks and it right in front of me walks this, we had a mountain lion. It was killing everybody's stuff, but it walked right out of nowhere. I didn't see it until it was literally in front of me and it didn't care that I was, <laughs> in front, you know, like I'm in this little S10. It did not care. Its head looks over at me. It did not care. Uh, it was unbelievable. And it it was like four more feet away and disappeared. Like how the fuck in my mind, Thank God. my mind yeah. was trying to just conceptualize, how is this possible? I see it. I see it. I see it. I'm looking at it. And then it's just disappeared. Camouflage, mm-hmm. natural. Do you ever wonder if there's like colors that we just can't see? Because we can only see what's in the visible spectrum, right? Oh, right. Totally. We know this, yeah. So, are there actually really other colors out there that we just can't perceive? I think there's a whole reality net around us. I don't know what it is. If it's a, uh, if it's actually the neural pathways, if it's our own brain in the blackness of our skull projecting out right into the realm of light, where everything has to come back in and then resettle and the blackness of your brain, there's something that can be fucked with there, yeah. I think. And right. our perceptions, because in the end, our perceptions are everything. 
Well, we know that, I mean, there's infrared light that we can't see. We know that that exists, but... And ultraviolet. Yeah, ultraviolet, yeah. There's there's all all things. All of what, what we call dark matter, what's called dark matter, which they can't seem to find, is essentially in a spectrum we can't see. We mm-hmm. can see everything else in the universe, but we can't see 90, 94% of it because it's too dark. And it so who are we to say it doesn't exist when we already know these limitations that we're working with? That's where I'm talking about with like open minds. Well, it's a mathematical theory they're trying to prove, as does all of theoretical physics. Yeah, but some guy wrote a paper that. about that he thinks it's liquid now. It's, what, it's, the, space is most, the interstellar medium is most likely some kind of liquid. I mean, it looks I, like it. I agree with that, actually. They come out with a paper friction. every three months with a new theory. Yeah. about Unless you're in it, you don't know that it's a liquid. That's how, you know, yeah. whatever they call it. It's how fine and mm-hmm. less, how non-viscous it is. Well, they say so, this is a liquid that we're, our air is a liquid to yeah. other animals and stuff. So Exactly. It's, it just seems like there's a density. As you move up in the atmosphere, the air gets thinner, right? And as you move down, it gets thicker. It eventually becomes water when you get below sea level. It's almost like the pressure of the atmosphere makes it wa- makes the atmosphere water at some point. Right. Naturally. It's just it's interesting. And or if that's it, okay, you know, makes me agree, wonder if like black holes aren't the plumbing of the universe. Oh, black yeah, holes could be theoretical. The the thing is what we're, what we're breathing could be a liquid. Yeah. Well, and also yeah. all we have is the the terms that we've defined them. Like that's all we know. Like we we couldn't even comprehend something that's outside of our way of thinking. Like if it's Exactly. You know, so it's we just we're we're set in this little narrow way of thinking. When you there know, could be so much more. Can you imagine the flood of snowflake melting if they told them, like, you're breathing a liquid? Air is really a liquid. <laughs> you know, just put out a news story like that from CNN. You know, you're, you, you can't drown, but you're breathing a liquid. No, if it comes, this is the problem with humans, homo sapiens, is if it comes from an authority, they, they'll believe it. So if it's coming from oh. what they perceive is an authority, and a lot of people perceive you missed Rachel my point. Maddow. I mean, you know, like okay. we can that's what I'm saying. If if one of them came out with it and said it was true, because science says it's true, they would get right on it. Yeah, they, no, they'd freak the fuck out. That's what I'm saying. No, I think I don't think they would. I think no. that if it's coming from like people, they you know, people need answers and they want answers from people they perceive to be in power or knowledgeable. So even though the news is bullshit, that kind of news. It's still enough that most people buy into it, obviously. Mm-hmm. So there'd be like a, a to do, to do, to do. And if they fact checked it, because that's everyone's thing now, mm-hmm. I think that people would just swim with it because it's coming from perceived authority. No pun intended. Again, it's the perception thing. I don't know. Like half the public seems like, you know, in December of 2017, when they came out and talked about the USS Nimitz and all of the uh, gimbal photos of, ufos and the government saying okay yeah they're real i thought damn man this is going to start an uproar then you go down the street and people are like aliens shit you know ufo craft that's not real i'm like what are you talking about the government they already just, admitted that they're fucking with it when yeah. when did that happen i'm like you gotta be shitting me nobody cares man they're in their own reality it's only mm-hmm. us that care. Yep. we're the only ones this community and and the problem is, is most of the UFO people are going to think that it's bullshit anyway if it's coming out from the government. Like, like that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's well, my biggest problem. Well, millions bullshit. Yeah. It's got <laughs> yes. We got way more, much more missing money than that. Trillions of dollars of missing tax yeah. money. Speaking of the, the young, I was on Twitter a couple of days ago. You, you know that the chick that plays Eleven on uh, uh, Stranger, Stranger Things, things Millie... Millie yeah. Bobby Brown, yeah, uh, she come out as a flat earther. I got a clip no. here. I'll play. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> no, I was watching a conspiracy. We were watching a conspiracy theory the other night, and let me tell you, we were watching. Was it Shane Dawson? Was it Shane Dawson? Yeah. Okay, maybe it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it definitely was. Shane Dawson conspiracy theory. It was Shane Dawson. <laughs> I'm going to have to check on mine. It can't be. It's not Shane, was it? Yeah. Anyway, guys, there are so many 
um, fact that is flat. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like, think about it. Like, I, guys, you don't even know. You don't even know. I think I am a, what do they call it? Um, a flat earth or nut job? I think a they flat call it oh a flat tart. What do they call it? Um, <laughs> God, oh my goodness. Crazy. They don't want her on their team. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, like, there's no I get, way that she could be gullible at all. Oh, right? yeah, exactly. like, like, no way. She doesn't know that gullible is not in the dictionary. Yeah. Wait, so is Shane Dawson a flat earther? Who's Shane Dawson? He's like a gigantic a YouTuber. Oh, man, I can't imagine it. He's he's like he's gay. He's flamboyant. He's fat. He's kind of fabulous. He just did the Jeffree <laughs> Star series. He's Who's, kind of fabulous. Who's I, I actually kind of enjoy him. Never I don't mind. watch him very much. Oh my God, Jerry. You don't know who Jeffree Star is? No. Girl. Anyway, um, <laughs> and it's a whole know. different thing, but I can't imagine that. My point is, I can't imagine that Shane Dawson's a flat earther. I will have to investigate. Man, flat earth. Why are they so convinced it's flat? Just, well, there's just. That's because these YouTube videos have some sort of mind control behind them and sound very convincing when you're watching them. So it's, if you're, it's a couple of things. You've got all the Bible influence there, right? And there's a lot of Bible influence. A lot influence. of the experiments, if you try to do them yourself, come out as if it's flat. There's a yeah, lot of I hold no, I, I've got no skin in this game. Yeah, For me, neither. it could be flat, it could be a donut, it could be a pear. Yes, mm -hmm. earth, I'm earth agnostic, whatever yes, it wants right? to be. It's infinite points the Bible is evidence. Oh, you better There's believe it, Joe. Between flat and round, you know, There's an infinite array of shapes there. Yeah, it's all just crap. So, you know, like like, it, like the like it, these kids, it, like even I would say kids, but like Steph Curry, like all these guys, all those basketball say, players, all coming out and saying, guys, it. Dude, they gotta just be trolling. They gotta be trolling. Yeah, it's just point. trolling, dude. It's all just crap. <laughs> I mean, what else are you going to do? The NBA season's it's long, you know. I mean. It's <laughs> I don't even watch basketball. Yeah, it reminds me of a joke. Yeah, it's the only tough. sport I like is sumo, and I really love sumo. <laughs> you like oh. to watch sumo wrestling? This so, you, they used to have it on TV, and now it's really hard to find <laughs> sumo wrestling. Wait, hold the phone here. Why do you? Why do you like watching that? Watching the I, fat people beat each other up. Sumo? Oh, I don't think they're fat at all. These are big guys. No, um, no, they're, they're fat. Well, I don't uh, know. They're I don't muscular. Know they they're muscular they're fat, also, Joe. They're, they're in, I know it sounds I know it sounds contradictory, but they're also in shape. So th it's not easy trying to you just have to get into sumo to understand sumo. There's well, a, I'm fat and well, I bet you I can jog further than most of them. It's not a jogging thing. It's moving it's, the other guy out of the circle. Yes. Yeah, so they yeah. train for like super explosive stuff that We're lasts. Do a little Googling thing. right now. Sumo wrestler. You, fitness. you have to get anabolic? into it. It, it. Joe, it's actually not it's really something good to watch. Easy. And it's it's not for your, it, these guys actually pack a lot of muscle. And there's a lot of grip, shin, uh, a lot of grip involved. There's a lot of tension. There's um, the moving of energy. It's this whole, it's, it's a whole thing. It's, it's. It's well, why don't you watch like judo or jujitsu? That's just that's the same thing. No, it's not, and it's an ancient it's an ancient form of sport. Yes. Also, hundred. No, no, no. I mean, it's, as far as using the energy and movement and all that stuff, it's a chess match. Well, yeah. I mean, I grew up doing martial arts, and the whole Shaolin thing is my thing, and and then Wing Chun and um, the whole Kung Fu, all of that. I enjoy all of that. I like the mindset. I like the inner ask the inner martial arts right why do you fight why are we doing what we do the objective is not to fight the objective is to live another day it's all about redirecting energy it's all about staying in alignment with your natural flows your toroidal system and the fighting is really like like the outer layer although yeah, here in western just, society in Western society, in like say Taekwondo nature, because that's what took over the states and it's kind of surface level. And you can't street fight with those high kicks, bitch, please. You high, expose your crotch to me one time, and I've got you. I don't know. <laughs> have you ever seen uh, Mirko Krokop? 
crack people's skulls with high kicks in the game. <laughs> I've seen them. Set, I've seen the stuff set up, but like in real street fighting, the it's you know that kind of stuff is not going to serve you well. Well, MMA is pretty close to street fighting, I would think. It it is. I'm not putting it down, but they're also mixed martial arts. So I'm not saying I'm. I'm just talking about those high karate, those high like um, taekwondo type. It's ta- I, I don't mean to pick on taekwondo. I no, just no, no. Granted, they're taekwondo. super hard to pull off and land, but there's certain people in the world that could do it. You know? I'm not. I'm not suggesting there aren't sifus in it or masters. I'm just saying there are other. Um, you know, there's Krav Maga. There is Wing Chun. There's other more effective ways mm. of street fighting. Fang and claw. There's a bunch of ways. So, but it, what I'm saying is in America, it's all the emphasis is on the fighting where that's not the real headset, you know, the real, um, Jerry, I ummed for you. That's not the real, uh, that's not where you're supposed to be coming from. Where you're supposed to be coming from. Yeah, yeah, I know. I took martial arts too. I took so combat. No, jiu- you're just jiu- fucking with took, me, Joe. Right. Yeah. So I took <laughs> combat jujitsu. I'm a brown and black belt in combat jujitsu. I also took samurai. You know, Japanese samurai, where you cut bamboo and all this other stuff. I mm-hmm. belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I know all about the spiritual stuff about, you know, martial arts and the whole, I'm, you know, fighting. And then everybody hugs afterwards because it was such a spiritual experience. What I'm saying basically is. We is never did that with my seat in the ring. Way. And they squat down and I can see their balls and ass cheeks. I start to, I don't like watching it. <laughs> I hear you, and that's why that's why it's not popular here. Yeah, it's not it's not big in the West. It, no, it, I mean, I'm think sure it's, it's popular in other places. Beautiful. It's really a po- it's an ancient sport, and it's very much honored and revered in other places, especially of course Japan. I want to go. To yeah, Japan. But can't they wear like a wrestling singlet? And do <laughs> yeah, favor? you know, dude, that's your own hang up. I actually find some of them attractive. But you know, I've been known to get yeah. on big man's like that. Yeah, I got, I'm, yeah, I got the hang up. I get it. I'll go with that. I'll I guess. I'm right on. <laughs> oh, sumo talks. Merry Christmas, I guys. I know exactly what you're talking about. I have a thing for huge bus drivers myself. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> thank god we don't have these hang-ups you know yes <laughs> right everyone's got that's a guilty pleasure of mine though but it would have to it has to be those firm bigger men like sumo guys you know like fail Phil. phil's got that whole situation you know i could climb up on that <laughs> mark hunt, you know and phil's mark big. Hunt he's a big man he's tall i think you'd like him mark hunt is a big man kind of sumo-ish looking mm-hmm. but he, i know his brother mike he beats people's uh, asses. Beautiful chair. Nailed it. I tend to, though, just for the record, actually, that's my that's my little secret pleasure are those kinds of men. What I tend to really, really like and seem to be swayed by are the real skinny ones. Like Steve. This guy. <laughs> skinny dudes with a small dick. I am all oh, over oh, you. Yeah, baby, you're talking Wait, language. Is that <laughs> real? <laughs> <laughs> That's what not real in the West, right? I like What's really skinny real? chicks. Oh, uh, I don't know about really skinny chicks, man. Sure fucking, no a, way. fucking a skeleton isn't fun. No, not you, skeletal. Just yeah, there's like a, it's all weird, but this illustrates how varied our tastes are, especially if we're not being mass controlled by you know what the propaganda being put out. What you should find attractive. I'll tell how much do those guys get paid? The sumo wrestlers. I don't uh, know, Graham. You have that stuff up. Had that. Stuff I bet up. they get paid a lot of money. <laughs> They're superstars, Joe. These are major stars. They're you know they've earned their place. It's a very um, it's a it's a respectful art and tradition, and they become very well compensated both well, in fame and fortune i'm pretty husky myself i'm just trying to figure out where my price line is for it wearing seems, a diaper. it like, seems like it's based on uh, early enough baby it's it seems like it's based on a, a sponsorship so depending on how many sponsors you have you gain a cut from that typically like uh sport. yeah it's just like radio then i'd rather do radio it's about sixty thousand yen per match it looks so i don't Wait. know what that transfers over into that's a lot of money. 60,000 yen. Yeah. To 
It's not. It's like it's like. I'm gonna say it's like six thousand dollars. Maybe. It's like six thousand dollars. No, no, sixty thousand yen is five hundred and forty-three bucks. There you go. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> it's, a thousand, it's a thousand to one. Yeah, so maybe they're not making the best money. Wow, that's um, not that about. That might the money be though, good man. money yeah. in Japan, you know. Yeah, it could be. No, it's not. It's fucking expensive as hell. Japan's really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? But they these guys too are sumo is not anymore. I mean, it's an internet. You know, uh, other places do it. It's done in America. It's just not televised. Yeah, I could see a bunch of rich people in some type of you know weird society watching sumo wrestlers. Which brings me to a great segue. First, first well, rule of sumo club that. is. I, because I'll um, gladly sit there. Yeah, who was sign the up for that? that used to sit on people? That, that, that was, was uh, yeah. Didn't Rafiki? <laughs> Wasn't it Rafiki, Rafiki also? Yeah, yeah. He used to jump from the ropes and like sit yeah. on them, and, and then they would pretend like they were dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love wrestling. So, so you, oh my god! You, know, you said Nish how hard it is to find it these days, and one of the reasons for that is in our you know collective shift to digital video and stuff we we're now only getting curated content we're not getting we can't surf yes. all these channels anymore everything's everything's curated down to a smaller bandwidth yeah that and is true that's bad the, the days of just channel surfing and finding something weird that you've never watched on tv like what the hell is this like you that's see something how I found yeah. sumo that's exactly how i got into it <laughs> that's how i found australian football yeah mm -hmm. see yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. not anymore. That's the old school, baby. Dude, that's how I found lawnmower racing. Well, <laughs> no, that's how I found porn. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, an accident. Yeah. Well, they started making it difficult channel. to do that because yeah. it's like your original cable. You had Cinemax. like you only had like 50, 60 channels, and now it's like a satellite dish has like five thousand channels. You can't channel surf that. You're not just gonna click up and down. So no that's way. that's when our it's curation like started. Ducks. Yeah, dude, my yeah, I but they're all owned by like the same big six. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. My, my Sorry, grandparents Jean. had this uh, satellite dish in their backyard growing up. Was it the I spinning one? The big ones? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah. It, was, it was this big dome ass thing. Yeah. You, know? yep. you, had to, yeah. you had to actually select what satellites to, dude, to point at and you'd have it spinning. You from Japan in it. Yeah. Yes. You'd pick up everything on those. It was ridiculous. <laughs> they must like, have nobody had country. cable or anything back then. This was well, in the 80s. Were they in the country? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say it had to have been out in the suburbs uh, or something. Yeah, you weren't in the city limit at all, you know, like in a big city or anything. No, yeah, they had a, like an acre and a half, so they had some land. You know, yeah, man, it, and that was about half. That was probably about a. That thing was pretty far away from the house too. It was pretty far back into the yard. <laughs> it took yeah. up a quarter of an acre. Yeah, well, it just huge. went all the way back there. It was way far in the in the middle of the yard, like. My, my grandpa had one, and I remember the first year Cartoon Network came out, and I, we were able to get it at his house. It was like 1990 Sweet. or something, or 91. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that was the yeah. best. Grandpa's is rocking. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good times. Old satellites. Christmas, yeah. Christmas so Day. The world's way it's, different. From it's Christmas 19. Day, guys. Yeah, yeah, Christmas the world day. is way different. The world's different from 10 years ago. Like it's I know, just but insane. if you just if you put on to, just from 1990, I think you see a bigger arch here. Yeah, well, that was my whole growing up. I always talk about this. Like, I was born in '85, so literally, like every year that I was alive, there was a new innovation, a new thing of technology. Like, we were getting like every year. Like, it seemed like the sky was the limit because things just kept getting yeah. better and faster, new new trends. And then it's like we hit a peak once the iPhone came out. And nothing new has come yes. out. It's like it's like yes. that was they they finally perfected the mind control device, and they don't have to do anything anymore. They're like, okay, we'll just ride this out for a while. Like it's just it's crazy. But it, this see, this That's is the true. stuff I think about when we circle back around to things like um, like Sasquatch. You know, like the whole mind control grid is. Uh, so re the Could reality be in place to hide that stuff from us, to keep us right, not Jerry. Scared. You're always in my head. Exactly. This is why I love my Jerry. <laughs> Where are you streaming? I saw uh, Gray America FM. Oh, oh, okay. I, forgot I saw this that. um this documentary I watched yesterday um before before my my brother and sister in law and stuff came over, but. <clears throat> I was killing like an hour. It was on Netflix. It's called like the lost art of Sokolowski. I don't know if you ever heard of this guy. 
this was crazy. It's like this Polish, um, uh, like realism, like artist guy, but dude, he was a sculptor and he had some of the most amazing shit I've ever seen. And, uh, like would put like Michelangelo stuff to shame, you know, like this guy was insane. And, but they, he started filming, like it goes through his friends that he meets ends up uh, in Hollywood, but then they go through this guy's whole backstory in life. And it, and it, he would see people like out on the street and stuff. And, and he, and in the certain type, and you were talking initially, I'm like this, this cloaking, this like, you the know, reality of the it. reality but like he's like i would he, he would explain he would see this type of person on the street and he'd be like they call him a yeti because of like short arms long like torso the way yes. it walked. he would always be talking about like bigfoot and shit and, yes. yeti, and he would draw it he sculpted it um dude he this guy was I've, uh, i gotta talk about this guy for a minute this guy was crazy like uh, like it, he was such a in like some people i remember one part of it they asked him like where did you learn anatomy from like his his sculpting and drawings and stuff and he's like my father and he's like he's like but was your dad an artist he's like no he was like a steel worker he's like when he was a kid in like poland in like 18 uh maybe like 1900 because he was born in like maybe 1870 or something like that like he, he was or his old. dad was. Oh yeah, he's for sure dead. I mean, he's been dead. No, since. his dad was born in 1870, or he was. No, he was. Yeah. Okay. When they were doing this film, he was like 90. Okay. And, and yeah. Um, but like, so anyway, this dude, like, his dad had di- got hit by a car when he was like a a grad student. Like he had moved to the U.S. and moved back to go study at this like high end like arts art school in Poland and um so he he went back there and his dad got hit by a car and died in the street and, it, and he happened to be there like around the same time it was like one of those weird like Spider-Man you like Uncle Ben say, so like, like, like Spider-Man yeah yeah no he just happened to be there yeah and he picks his dad up and carries him home like or no carries him to the morgue and then he was like well He's like, can I have my dad's body and shit? And he took his dad home and just diced his dad up. Oh, man. Like, they let him do it, like, as, like, a cadaver. Jesus. Yeah, and he's like, that's how my dad taught me anatomy. So, like, his view on everything was so warped. Like, (laughs) he wasn't a serial killer or anything, but he he was an amazing talent, dude. Like, but his whole view on life and, and everything was really wild. But then it takes a weird turn, like, uh, he was became really like you find out towards the end he was and was, he's just like a fucking racist bigot like he hated jews and shit it was like a weird thing that they added into the not they added but like that all his friends were ashamed about you know like that they found out about him and, and doing this film and stuff but Dude, like everyone everyone displays yeah. hubris yeah so, i mean we start hating everyone for their hubris and we start <laughs> silencing that then we've got a real problem but what's his name i want to know i feel like Stokolowski. i should Stokolowski. yeah like i need to link, link it in the chat or yeah, something totally if you have I Netflix, feel like i should know from but, just going to art school oh dude this stuff like i've never even heard of this dude yeah that's why i was like it, it i mean i'm in the yeah the same thing i like I, I know like a lot of different artists and stuff and i never even heard of this guy like and they were and there were these underground comics back in the day it was like out in California, like this whole, I, there was it like, oh, what the hell was it? I remember, what was it like, Rat Fink or something like that? You know, like there was a, oh yeah, was that, yeah. that weird underground like mm-hmm. comic scene back then, and um, so these dudes, you know, they were they were in their twenties, and then they, he was like, I was in a bookstore one day, and I and I just saw this fucked up like this book and it had this weird writing down the side of it It looked like a snake and it and then as you figure out this dude when he was in school like growing up he invented his own language like own lettering for language and and his and his parents kind of like let him do whatever he wanted it was weird like his dad like hit the teachers like he's not like forming you know like the right you know letters and stuff he's and his dad's like fuck that i want him to be able to do whatever he wants and shit so like he had this like weird idea of letters but but it's like tolkien 
it was oh this guy was like legit dude he was like fuck school he's like you're there to learn what they want you to teach you and dumb you down every year mm-hmm. since then da, da, da. yeah this guy was like way ahead of his time man he it was pretty wild. he's very interesting cat for sure again uh, so i need links to these things yeah it's so very I- cool flick i mean just he like killed his father he, he didn't kill him though his dad got hit by a car and he happened to be in the same area at the time and he took mm. it and he, he he throws his dad up on his shoulder and walks him to the morgue and then <sighs> talking with them they released his body to him and then he took his dad home and diced him up well you know yeah. poland's always been a little wild and anyway that that uh-huh. period of time too i mean there's so much different stuff this is when you would have your loved one on the kitchen table and people would mourn them and yeah, come you in do everything in like the house. That. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I mean, and yeah, I'm definitely like a uh, Polish. Uh, I, I'm not mainly like. I knew there was something to this. James yeah. loves Polacks. Yeah, no. and uh, oh, you can. Dude, <laughs> I, I love a good Polak joke, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, dude, weird. I got it. A lot of Polish. I, I met this lady uh, at at the airport. No, it's in the airport. It was in where the fuck was that? Uh, fuck. DC or something. I like she was in the hotel we were staying at, and she. Found, I don't know. It was weird. I don't know if it was an ancestry <laughs> thing or something. She takes a trip to freaking Poland and was telling me about it, and I was like, uh, she, how like epic it was and stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. just because of like. Like I guess they have like a real deep connection to well the, I I think it's that European thing and plus it's Poland and you know not well, kind of like the Badlands now too. Oh, oh dude I got one more story about this dude he got commissioned by the Nazi Reich and like in uh in Hitler and shit to do a fucking statue of Hitler because <laughs> he made this crazy statue and they loved his work you know and he's like. And, but like I said, this guy hates all these fucking people. They, I mean, he just he almost destroyed Poland to begin with. You know, wipe it off the face of the planet. But yeah, uh, yeah. so what he does is he develops this whole crazy sketch of Hitler in a dress and shit, like this whole thing, and then sends it back to him. And they like, oh, we respectfully decline your, uh, <laughs> your design. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty pretty funny gimmick. I'm as speaking of art, I'm interested in that piece behind you on the wall. What is that? This thing? That's, that's, yeah. That's, well, you, uh, I'd show you better. It's Batman. Man, yeah, that's rad. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> James Cruz displaying his. That's a James Cruz original on the wall. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. He, he did that. James, Batman. that's your works. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Holy cow. I love it. Oh, Steve, why are you laughing? That is bad. Okay, no, I just I, the camera is just going crazy. No, oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Hold it still for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. <laughs> no, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, one day I'm like, man, it's too, too many white walls in here. So I love that you just have that ability. <sighs> that's great. I had an idea of just, I yeah, and just threw it on there. I sketched it out first on with some pencil and just roughed it out and. Uh, God, I mean, I don't. I think I just got regular, some regular paint colors, and I just you I found my. Ahead. You know what it was was when I was packing my house up. That when I was going to sell it before, mm-hmm. I came across a ton of my old art art stuff, and uh, I found I had I had this bamboo thing. It was all rolled up and it had all my brushes and stuff in it. I'm like, Man. right, yeah. It like started like making my brain spin for a minute. I'm like, I need to use these. I haven't used them in forever, so I painted that. But I, I, I want to add. You had, I didn't know you were this artistic. I mean, seriously, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, man, I've been into it. I would say I've been in the art since I was probably, God, eight, you know, seven years old, something like that. Yeah, I what, remember. I remember why some are you of, not? What got you away from it? Oh, I did it for a long time. I I did. I well, I I I went down the the in the, the uh multimedia aspect of it as for a profession i did it for 16 years um interesting yeah i, I did uh yeah design uh I, I the last gig i was at was at a screen printing place and i did all the art for 
like t-shirts and jerseys and fucking tons of shit like that. Yeah, screen printing's fun. Yeah, it was old school manual printing too. So like, uh, yeah, I've done yeah, it. It's yeah. it's fun. So I did that for a long time, and uh, but I did some other multi. I did web design shit for a while. Why? I wasn't a coder. I, like Jerry would be the guy that puts all my things together. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how like my job, like I designed the things and the pages and he would cut them all up and code everything. Like, so I worked for, I did that for a while. I did some video editing for a while. I've done a bunch of random, but as far as drawing, yeah, like this thing, that, that, that Batman thing was one, of, it's probably one of the, the newest things I've ever did in a long, long time, besides just some dicking around that I like to do for the show with the little pictures and stuff for the show art. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's just a computer. You know, it's just, I make, I make those on my phone and they turn out nice and they're, they're quick, cool little thumbnail things that they look pretty relatable to whatever the show's about. But, um, yeah, I find that yeah. most people I know that are allow the creative juices to flow. They're they don't the juices don't just go. You can apply them to one thing, and you sure. can just be one thing a it's sculptor, impossible. a painter, all that. <laughs> but I find that people who are actually opening the t- tapping into the well of creativity, we whatever we touch, you know, we're, yeah. we're creative about it, and so. And it seems like whatever your interest is, you learn how to do it and you do it. Dude, I remember when I learned how to play pool, like yes. billiards. Like, I mean, it was crazy. Like, I was so into it. I had to learn like every single thing about it, you know, and like not to be the best, but just learn how to play the game, like how cool. to do and do the shots and everything. And mm-hmm. I, I was like, fuck it, man. I like the whole time I was in college, I played on a league in a league You're and I learned so much shit, dude. Yeah, like, did you ever go to the fair and, and rob those guys of all their teddy bears? That no, th- but I did <laughs> like, I did hustle like old drunk dudes at bars. <laughs> <laughs> that is another art. I art played for three. Art. I played like every day for like three years solid. Yeah. Damn. It was crazy. Yeah. And then t- uh, I did the same I haven't thing. played. I couldn't even tell you the last time I played pool, but but I'm into something. Joking. I'm like 110 percent into it. Yeah, like that's a good person. I everybody was using too much English. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Once you realize it's all about the next shot and the shot after that. You oh, don't dude, really, yeah, you're you five shots ahead English. sometimes. Yeah, stop it's, using English. You don't really have to use it. You know, nah. just it's all about ball placement. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yes, fun. It is. I think a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. get it. A lot of people get addicted Dude, to the whole yeah. you know, <laughs> Joe Rogan confessed that he had an addiction uh, to pool for a long yeah. time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. He uh, I was obsessed with it, dude. I heard it that was... on his show recently. Yeah. yeah, he was talking about his addictions with somebody. I forget who it was. Oh, there's a co- I, I Well, I used to have this. Well, there was this famous dude, uh, but I, I won. I beat this dude and he, he was drunk, but I beat him for a pool cue. And it was a moochie, which was like one of the best sticks you could get back then. And uh, yeah. and I fucking schooled this dude. I had a, I had I had a camel cigarette cue that like my ex had, <laughs> had gotten by like saving those like camel bucks or whatever. Oh my god, that's <laughs> like, right. Yeah, this is fucking stupid ass cue. But I fucking rolled this dude, and I and I got a moochie, and I man, I I did. I ended up selling it for like three hundred bucks. Like, Jeez. but. Yeah, yeah, we used too. Yeah, I used it for a long time, and I still sold it for like three hundred bucks. But anyway, like, you ever win any tournaments? No, I just played a lot of um, like just a lot of leagues. I played a lot of leagues, and then I then I went. You know, those league nights, I played in like I would try to play. I think I did like two two leagues like a week at the you know every week i would have a night of that two nights of that and then just every night i or played for hours because my ex was a bartender so i'd get out of school i'd get out of work so then after work i would just go and hang out until the bar closed and then we'd go home so like i just that's why i'm saying i was always there i'm like i need something to do you know like because we only had I one car that- bothered me when i'd have a boyfriend i was always a bartender and having the boyfriend hang out honey cuts into your tips well no man Mm -hmm. i was in the back room or i was next door at uh this other dude's place like yeah it's a weird area there but i've always wanted a snooker table like if i could i've never played that yeah Yeah, man if you play snooker and you get off a snooker table after you played a few hours yeah what is snooker Snooker's like a big, it's a big, huge pool table 
the pockets are smaller, yeah. but the balls are smaller too. And so it's so a point. it's not like a legal size pool table. It's no. a whole and different thing. You got to be a lot more precise with your shots, but it's a points game. So you hit red ball, which is a point, then number ball, which is another point. So red ball would be red ball one point, and then the one ball or whatever you're hitting is one. Two is two points, then red. So you got to hit red ball, number ball, red ball, number ball, and you got to go in order. Interesting. And once you get off that table and you go to like a bar table or any table, you, yeah. you don't miss because yeah. it's like it, that was easy. Pool yeah. is easy compared to that. Yeah, if you play pool on a, on a like a legit size table, like and then go to like the little tiny like seven foot tables yeah it's like totally different and if somebody scratches then you get to pull your your balls back out so it's it's yeah. a game that takes forever <laughs> and, and the felt sometimes the felts are a big you know like they're different yeah. everything's different felt. Cool. Felt. yeah the felt yeah feel felt. it up feel felt, it get it Pulling yeah them balls out felt. yeah <laughs> she like i'm in my high school locker room shining and, you know. them balls <laughs> on the felt surface uh, yeah uh, <laughs> I, oh, man. But as far as art, I was, yeah, I was probably like seven. I remember like sitting in front of the mirror and I started drawing myself in reverse. It was fucked up. And I, you and that's it? where it all started, dude. Wait. And then you yeah. talked about Nish being young and like you're, you were open, being open minded. That's what led you. That's what happened. Art is what happened to me. And it made me open minded and, or like allowed me to be open minded about so many possibilities and that's where it all began for, like i've always been in the yeah fairly woo this that nothing too crazy but you I, know what you could do you could do a cruising with state comic book you know i'd be interesting oh man that's a project <laughs> that a graphic, that's a project a graphic novel would be rad <laughs> that would be pretty cool i, I we'd I mean, have to do a whole storyboard cool. on it and stuff yeah, yeah. I mean, it I've done them. Fine. I've done storyboards. It's, uh, yeah, the concept, uh, concept meetings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. If you just make one and the right person looks at it, you could start doing it as a career. There's a lot. Ah, man. It looks huge yeah. right now. It's so weird. Like, that's why, like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it, I mean, my job now, it's not, doesn't, may not seem glamorous, but like, I mean, I've always, I mean, I got, I'm do, I manage apartments and shit and I work on, I do construction and I do all that stuff because I wanted to get out of that shit. Like when yeah. you do, when you're doing yeah. stuff for a, like, I, I'm going to say for, I, I, I liked designing things um, the time when I was like into it. Yeah. I can make 12 hours fly by in like five minutes in my head, you know, like you lose all track of it. It's like, you're like in the zone like playing a game or something you know you just mm -hmm. totally forget about time it doesn't even equate but like but when it yeah like when it got to be like more personal and money and it's my life my i got kids you know like like it was it started weighing on me a lot a lot more and a lot more than we them me and the employer you know we just a lot of arguing and fuck you man no fuck you you know like <laughs> just yeah it didn't work out in the end and i was just so spent i could i did not want to sit in front of the computer anymore I'm, i i i was getting ah, i was such a downward spiral towards the end just self-doubt i feel like, you I, feel I, like I was at that yeah i think i would have been 35 at the time because mm -hmm. yeah it was about five years ago i quit that job and uh so wait. i can't do art for commit i mean i am that's what is it say for money when I you're do doing it for art. money it's totally yeah. different it takes out the luster. It takes yeah. out the muse. Literally, uh, out of those, out of those hundred thousand pieces of art I made, not one of them was for myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't. That's why I don't do <laughs> yeah. commissions. Yeah. I don't do any of that. Any of it. It's all literally for art's sake, and right. that's why that I look at everything I do that's just pure. I'm proud of. And yeah. it's not being manipulated by the outside world. And it certainly doesn't have the nastiness of, of the market. What's selling on the market? Okay. Red always sells and paintings and everything. Like it's not, you're not thinking like that. You're not monetizing. No, it's, like, it what won't should work. not be monetized. It won't work. Really. Yeah. Because if you're trying to follow something like that, you're already way too behind it. You know, yeah. like you have to have a concept and then build it. 
mm-hmm. and then whatever you it turns out to be that's your style it doesn't matter like you know like uh, I, I i don't know yeah you say reds in but maybe yeah maybe that design had red in it or something that would be the only well, it's relatable, just, it's relatable the whole thing, thing. Of looking at everything yeah. to be put on the market or marketable yeah. gotta so, sell it gotta sell it yeah yeah it just like makes it something beautiful, which is it. the yeah. creative artistic process, and and gets that stench on. So it. yeah, I got I got like salty towards it. I just didn't want to sit, and plus I was doing it all via computer, and I'm like, there's some twelve year old kid that knows more. That, that's what I was saying when I was starting to get, oh, yeah. get down on myself. I was like, there's eight to twelve year old eight twelve year old kids that know more about <laughs> these design programs than I do at this point, you know. And and that's it, where I'm like, man, f this. I like, and I couldn't wait. And then I now I'm I still love what I'm doing now, and like it, I can be creative in different ways. And yeah, like you're saying, you're all once creative, you're always got that back on. And yeah, like Jerry, I'm proud of you, dude, man. Like for taking up something, you know, you might not have thought you'd ever be interested in, dude. Like, like I, yeah, I bought a fucking lathe. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm kind of. I was in the same boat you are. I was yeah. born with computer stuff. It's like yeah. Right, it's a, it's a, it really takes your mind off of Time that, to that, build that another grind, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, so I like I yeah, so that's where I'm at with the whole art and then becoming or aware of your surroundings more, you know, and like. And now I know how to make tiny bats. No doubt. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. So and yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, shout out to Felix. I miss you tonight, dude. Um. But yeah, I owe him some art. Like, there's people that I always like. Yeah, man, I want to do that for you. I want to do that for you. Like, it's just oh my god, I get overwhelmed sometimes with things. But and then some things are easy. But then when it comes to something like that, for you know, like uh, when I don't want to say it's not pressure, but it's just uh, like I really want to do a good job and put the time that I think is worth putting into something like that. It, it makes it more important to me than just dicking around and making something. That's the only reason I haven't fully done it <laughs> with a lot of different projects. I say I wanted to do, but I don't know. I, I over promise and under deliver a lot as you can tell, as they say, <laughs> he sees occurs my man. That's right. Bro. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's probably my biggest flaw. One of my biggest flaws over promise and under deliver. <clears throat> still love you james can't make any of everyone happy dude i try no you can't it's too hard yeah. to try to make everybody happy too yeah just gotta make mm-hmm. yourself happy and then people around you will be happy too once you're happy that's right uh, you're no doubt happiness uh-huh. no doubt yeah you gotta piss off some people man i try well, yeah. it, Susie and the you band. know it's weird like you said joe yeah like doing this type of stuff and this is another you know it, i i sit you know i'm sitting here talking about doing art but like i i consider this part of it you know like yeah eventually mm-hmm. it'll get really cool like, it's still building it's still going we're still forming we're still changing you know like that's what's Which cool is- about it it's always changing it's its own and you'll know because you'll start pissing people off there you <laughs> go <Yeah. laughs> you know the, the, the they'll still hate mail your butt trying to find something to yeah it's about, you know and then you're doing the right thing and just then you questioning can just, things you know quite yeah i mean that's no, what we're here to do we're here to talk and we're stupid yeah, I yeah shit. <laughs> but I mean, I would love to be able to draw. I don't think you give yourself enough credit because there's a lot of people things people can do technically. Yeah, sure. Right. But yeah. putting pencil to paper and being able to draw something cool is is actually a very good talent. I'm. Yeah. I wish that's, I, oh, that's, that's tough, a gift. Dude. That's yeah. a gift. Totally. It's still tough. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could do it. Mm, it's I tough. Can't draw it's not. Shit. I couldn't shade an apple in art class. <laughs> you could learn it, though it, it's all technique and you can learn sure i remember learn. one of the first things i start worked on when i was in, in sixth grade i made i i did a i reproduced a georgia o'keefe painting of like a rose just because i thought it was dope and like i don't know it was in a a, a well, flower yeah, that was her, one of the first flowers were yeah it was one of the yeah she was all about flower and like the vagina yeah 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 and like i'm like something hit me i'm like i need to make yep. this <laughs> and like, something yeah hit me. and uh and i made it to the best of my ability and that 
that's when it really took off was with the art shit. And I did yeah, it. I always remember that in our art yeah. class in school, like there'd always be like a couple kids in the class that were just drawing amazing shit. And yeah. then like, I'd look at yeah. mine and be like, ah, <laughs> just, well, it's tough. Cause there was way, there's, there's people that are way more skilled than I ever was. And I wasn't even the tops in some of this stuff at all. Like, believe me. I never, you know, it was never the best. There's always some, not that it was a competition. I just felt like, see, I just got wanted to put out your best and I it don't was know. a challenge. I don't know about that. The best thing is so weird because mm. people's perspective of the best, especially the masses. Well, yeah. It's so strange. People, a lot of what I notice in the world around me is that people value realism. So if yeah. you can paint real, realist painting, then you're like better than the abstract person over here or the folkish person over here. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of weird biases that go into it. And I mean, it's a huge discussion. In yeah. Art, like this dude, art that Sol Kowalski guy, his idea of what was real was, it was just enhanced dude. His detail of, of things were phenomenal and stretched and like, I'll, I'll, I'll find some stuff here as we're talking, but, uh, in, but um, and and he got like shit for it, you know. And he's like, he's like, and one of his favorite things was the old ancient, like the shit that's carved in stone and and like all, all around the world, you know, like because it was just some they didn't have like reference. They just started carving shit and making what they thought was cool, like these faces and stuff, you know. Like, and that's why he related the same type of idea towards his art, you know, like, and and it's it's not to please anybody. It's just your interpretation of, of these things, you know, and it, and that's all that matters. Do the best you can. And, uh, for the idea, you know, if you can create what's in your head, I think that's a hundred percent, uh, completion of the project. And, and I'd be scratching my head if I could only get to 99%. It, like it fucks me up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that's all art man anything yeah. you love to do I tr you're yeah, never yeah. Gonna be, you're never going to be done with it you know yeah. it's like it's never done it makes me wonder how painters decide when enough's you're enough never, yeah. you're never done i have paintings that i've been working on 10 years and i'm not done until no i doubt, sell right? them. Yeah. If they're in the house they're you know i can be looking at it sideways going uh you're going back on the easel right now <laughs> you know it's never done uh, any, well, look, anything I've done, I I lived as a painter for quite a while. That's what I sold, focused on. You sold paintings? Yes, I went to two schools where painting was my focus, and um, so I was really committed to it. And it's, you know, I feel and a, a lot of my social circle outside of here, are, they're artists, and so like art, the art is not done a lot of artists are just never finished until it's out of the house that you hear that it's not an uncommon thing yeah it makes me wonder because i look at audio as an art and uh, oh, i think totally. uh, i've been listening to some of these podcasts like these fictional fantasy podcast i've heard some really cool stuff um there's a podcast called uh, alice isn't dead i don't know if you've heard it or not but no. It's the same people that did, um, well, it's the same, you know, that podcast called Night Vale or whatever. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of Night Vale before. So Night Vale was this guy that pre they pretend to be in a radio station in a fantasy world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of all fantasy. Even the radios, they were just playing characters inside of the radio. It's weird, you know, but you get, you start to catch on. Like, okay, they're making up characters. They're making up this radio station. They're making up the city that they live in that they're doing. And they would have different characters. And it was like you're listening to talk radio in a story. And then they did this other show called Alice Isn't Dead, which is like a horror type thriller that has episodes like TV shows. Wow. You know? And I'm listening to this stuff and I'm like, wow. You know, this is incredible because it reminds me of old time radio when they used to do those, but more modern, way more modern and way more creative. And so uh, people always ask, like, are you, why aren't you happy with your show? Because I'm thinking, do you have any idea what this is going to be like in 10 years? I mean, it's going to be 
insane. You guys should listen to that stuff. Incredible. And I don't know how they decide that they're done with it. You know? Huh. I'll definitely check it out. I need, I'm the queen of needing a link. I just (laughs) put a link in our chat for this Netflix documentary I was talking about. So, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. In the chat here in Zoom. Cruising with steak chat. I, I can put it in the Zoom one here too. For you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm gonna just for yeah some yeah but just the, I I love how some of those podcasts are just so highly produced like just with yeah. the effects and everything and it just it sounds so good. They got teams of people and editors working yeah. on stuff, all for our recording. It's just it's mm-hmm. insane. And then you hear it and you're like, wow! It ain't just about the audio quality. That's a minute. It's the writing. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'd love to have a, I'd love to know somebody that does a show like that or have a show on the network like that. That's kind of like that. It's so hard to explain how cool it is. I literally was laying down trying to go to sleep, listening to Alice isn't dead. And I had to turn it off because I started freaking out. <laughs> Man. I have to check that out. Well, it's it's the whole theater of the mind coming back. It's like they used to. That's yes. how that's how it all used to be. Was just old time radio. Like people would sit around and listen to radio shows at night. There was no TV, you know. And I feel like like the podcast mediums definitely brought that back. Sure. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, James, I totally it. know who this is. Yeah, right. He's Once you start seeing this shit, wow. yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's a genius. <laughs> He did all his work in plaster, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, but it's some really fucking wild stuff. But his story and his thoughts and views on things were f- from a different world. It, like he was like, uh, I don't even know. It's like it's weird. Stanislav? Stanis, yeah. yeah Stanislav, How do you say his last name? Slokowski. Yeah. Right. And I should, I wish I could find, uh, there's this whole like crazy alphabet that he had, <laughs> but how he's um, saying yeah, he's a genius. I could, I could guess I wasn't understanding your pronunciation of his name. So I thought, yeah, I don't know. So, clo- so clo- there's no stop. words there. So, yeah. they, so you guys have no, you know what moth podcasting is, right? Moth. No. So moth. Moth you podca- look at lamps at the same time. <laughs> no, moth <laughs> podcasting is like pure storytelling. So it's the art of storytelling. Oh, I get it. Moth. So the they, mm-hmm. yeah. So someone will tell a true story about themselves, but they put in sound clips and sound effects, and they walk you through their mind as they're experiencing the story, and it's really cool. And I was thinking about that, like Knox Mente, right? I was thinking about what if somebody did a a, a moth style podcast about their dreams. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. I like it, Joe. Yeah, I, get I it. like the idea a lot. Like they took you through their real dream, but they use sound clips and sound bites and more. Yeah, be cool. and right, so you're almost going through it in a whole different way. You're going through it really viscerally. Right. It's different than interview. It's just yeah. one person telling. Okay. And you go right into their mind. And it's hard to explain, man, but I've been listening to this stuff for a while now and I can't stop listening to it. That's Do you a, have a, a good example of what you've been listening to? Yeah, like the the Moth podcast is a good one. These people just tell stories about simple stuff. Like this one guy tells a story about trying to break his record riding a bike. And you're thinking, mm-hmm. that sounds boring. But when you go into his mind and they use the sound clips and everything, it's really incredible. Sounds awesome. I'm going to be checking it out. It, it, you know, it appeals to like the multimedia aspect in me that likes this whole, the overlays of stuff, the collage reality, the cut up reality mm-hmm. where you can create another reality by, you know, 2d flat storytelling and then building around it with all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, like, so what um, James was talking about, like with art, I had an artist tell me one time that, when you draw, you're trying to draw uh, a song in your head and you're trying to put a picture to it. And then when you write music, you're trying to write music to a picture that you see in your head. Mm. Right. So it's like vice versa. But then uh, with, 
I think with storytelling, podcast, and audio, you're actually trying to paint the picture using sound, not just your voice, but how you tell the story and sound clips. Yeah. And really take them into your mind. And it's incredible, man, because you get to paint your own. It's just like reading a book, but it's a little different. And you get to paint your picture of what they're telling you. That's yeah, happening. That sounds kind of I, I dig it. reality in a way. Yeah. But not not to that extent, but where you're creating a 3D, something 3D out of something 2D, really. Well, yeah. there's, a whole, there's a whole world of, of artists that... Like when I grew up through painting classes and all this, you did not paint from your head. You always painted from life. And this was across the board, all the different painting instructors I've had. So that the um, painting from your head is definitely a certain school of people. I do that. And if you look at my work, you can clearly see I do that. But that's just, I had to point that out. As so many artists are like, you paint from life. It's from life. Everything's from life. Yeah, uh, paint from the but imagination. But they're looking for realism, too, I think. Mm-hmm. So. I don't James, know. I just... It was James talking, and, like, he's muted. No, I know. I'm, talk- I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm talking to my son. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm going to check out that that uh, Alice Isn't Dead podcast. It looks pretty good. I have it lined up. I'm thrilled about yeah. it. Yeah, it starts out because it's kind of like a dream. You know how when you're in a dream, you don't really know how it started. You just know you're there. You don't remember mm-hmm. the start of it, but you're just in it. And they kind of throw you in that. And then it, they start painting the story around it. And it's just, it's really freaky. That's, it's, that's well, to put these painting this picture, like... The thing I've been obsessed with is this Glass Cannon podcast. It's a D and D podcast. <laughs> I always laugh because it's that's what it is. But uh, but I started episode one. I'm at a hundred and thirty. I've listened okay. to a hundred and thirty some out, probably a little bit more than that, of hours straight of this podcast because I love the production. I love the theater of the mind and the way they do their show. What? Well, how do they do? It? It's no. I mean, they're playing D and D. Imagine right. us, but like really good, <laughs> like, like at, at theater of the mind and explaining your character's moves. And they have the, the, well, I have the same soundboard now that they use, but um, they have music that goes along with it on the fly. They're doing all this shit, you know, like it, they're just, and they're voice actors, like a couple of them are voice actors. So they're really good. Like the DM can do like 10 different voices at one time you know so that like adds to it yeah so like the whole story yeah and they've been doing this since 2000 i think they did a couple in 16 but ever since really 17 you know 2017 you know three years or so straight uh like once a week they released the show and i you know when we started playing i i uh a while back and like i got hit to this show and then i finally like i listened to one or two and i'm like all right I was like, all right, I'm going all in, and I haven't stopped listening. I'm so addicted to it. And, uh, Are you guys going to have them on cruising with steak? I want to reach out to them. I know a couple of the guys. Like as I'm getting higher up in the numbers of their show, like mm-hmm. it sounds like they're cool enough to like go on shows and stuff. So, like, like I don't know about every one of them, but like I, I think at least a couple of them would really like the one the main dude. These guys make a pretty good living playing D D, man they do twitch streams and shit they do a yeah. bunch of stuff like, yeah like yeah, there's, all those, big there's all those success stories there are these people, random pod- yeah, people yeah, doing success, success stories. Like you said, yeah. how much does come town make oh <laughs> uh, dude come come town makes fifty thousand a year or a month on patreon a podcast <laughs> called come town and is all it is <laughs> it's it's just three comedians from New York, and they just they literally just bullshit and just See? just Goals, riff dude. riff Goals. riff for an hour, and that <laughs> that's all they do. And I mean, it's hilarious if you have like a childish sense of humor. Yeah. So I mean, I laughed my ass yeah. off during it. <laughs> I, I tried to listen to the last episode. It wasn't that fun. I haven't oh, tried man. it yet. Like a like I said, I've just been so enamored with it because I listen but to three hours a day. Doing this, all of us yeah. are out here doing this stuff all the time. We broke as motherfuckers. No mm-hmm. doubt. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's just it like I said, it, it's another version. Well, you know, way to uh, if you I was listening to the Spreaker live show because uh-huh. um, one of our hosts is on that show, Alex Exum. He's crazy, but they there's six hundred thousand podcasts out right now. That's oh my insane. gosh. Six hundred thousand. Good luck being in the wow. That's why that you see that top one hundred on Apple, you're like <laughs> Yeah. Well and also, dude, how <laughs> like, many podcasts how many podcasts do you see that just start up, they go for like five, six episodes and then they quit? Yeah. Just because yeah. So because, at, to be honest with you, to get yourself to get yourself above the fifty percentile is easy. Be, it's not yeah. hard. Just, just by being continuing to do yeah, it. Yeah, just being consistent. Time. Yeah, and then you just well, gotta how figure. How long out. have we all been here, Joe? How long's yours been going? Joe's, you've been going for a while. Two years now. How long? Two years. Mm-hmm. I'm up to like episode two thirty five, I think. Nice. Well, yeah, and you're that's pumping awesome. out. You're pumping out four a week now, so that's just yeah, that's getting crazy. It's not really a podcast. It's like, well, I mean, it is it's a radio but, yeah. show, but it's still kind of a podcast to me. Yeah. So, a podcaster, uh, I think it's easy to get in that 50 percentile, then you just got to figure out how to, you know, to keep climbing. So you got to yeah. look at things like from a marketing point of view, but you also got to look at things from a creative point of view and you got to keep going back and setting goals for both and you'll yeah. get out of it. and you'll I be surprised so. yeah. when you look back just how far you went. If you'll just stay steady and just keep doing it, you know, mm-hmm. but you got to yeah, say, we're goal. all steady here. Cruising with steak and Knox. Yep. We're steady, steady. Yep. Yeah. We pretty much started at the same time. We're just yeah, going. I know, guys. It's been, been a little over it? a year. I know. It's awesome. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, I have, I couldn't imagine not doing this, you know, for a long, long time. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I There's always something going a, on. There's always something we can it's have a passion a project. About. Yeah. Yeah. And it'd be it'd great be awesome. if it got even bigger somehow yeah, dude, I don't if, know, if, if people actually if listen did, that's did, just but... that's just a benefit i mean i just like hanging out <laughs> yeah like joe said you know like things evolve and in, in over time you know i think it'll get even better so why would i mean we'll get better at being on air we'll get better at you know and the only, the only problem i have is just i just don't know if i want to keep doing like interview shows or these variety type show but do whatever you want that's exactly that, yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly I guess if I, it. yeah, like I think that's what it was. I felt pressure. Of yeah, not dude, we, we hit that. We hit I, that wall because we were yeah. just in an interview show, like get guests, get guests. Yeah. And then like we hit that wall, like back in the fall. And it's just like, eh, do we really want to well, interview people anymore? Like <laughs> we do, I think. And what I've been trying to do lately is to think of a topic or a subject, right? Or a question. And then you know, write a uh, 10 questions you want to know about this, uh, something that you think is it's on your mind, like hardcore. And then, you know, bring a guest on to, to sprinkle some icing onto the show. Yeah. But don't depend on them. Like, you know, well, I like how could, we had Denver on last time, just recently. Yeah, that, just hanging out. Like, yeah. yeah. Just hanging and he can throw his, you know, two cents in on things. And, have a more relaxed you get the person more relaxed you know like in that environment yeah i like what you're saying joe like you where you make the show and then just let them kind of build on it rather Uh than making it about their book or about whatever they're promoting or anything i like that dude yeah Yeah. Uh so say for instance i wanted to talk to somebody about you know how they used to make you know get the uh eggs or the sperm from a dying man or something to impregnate (laughs) women. something i read right which is crazy that's a crazy subject. Well, what? <laughs> here's some guests you can get on. You can get on a woman that's actually done that, a lawyer that's been involved with a case like that, or some. It doesn't have to be a celebrity. You don't. And what I think a lot of people are trying to do is this Jimmy Church style thing, Man. which Jimmy and Art Bell they kind of do. So you have a big name guest on every week, mm-hmm. and these people, you listeners, and then you capture a small a portion of that audience each show. That sticks around because you're not going to capture all their followers, but you're going to capture an amount. But that's just marketing. And after a while, you're like, man, this isn't fun anymore. You know, like I'm just getting guests on. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I think that's kind of what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, exactly what happened with our show. I, or just I like, mean, I, like, I did like the idea of bringing, uh, yeah, like you said, like there's what, 600,000 podcasts out there. Yeah. Like, I like the idea of talking to other podcasters, but like, I don't n- particularly know these people. So I don't know. I, I, I try to just like kind of roll the dice and just start listening to stuff that was in these fields and these genres that we like yeah. and, and, and see if they like, sounded cool enough like if, uh, like in my head that maybe they'd want to like come hang out for a while and, right. and experience you know talk about what they have learned and stuff you know well it kind of works it, it... go ahead Joe. you can make it on a podcast if you have a thousand loyal followers you don't have to have ten thousand downloads no uh, i know no. yeah yeah well dude i mean that's that's kind of how we we grew our audience to a little bit like we had just having like a culture on like Ryan Peverly and and sure. Joe from Moby DM like we we picked up listeners that have come into the chats and been like hey I'm here because of a culture or I'm here because of Moby DM like you know people I love yeah you know, I love Mike, oh, is, dude. Uh, Mike, Mike awesome. is Mike is awesome like he's they they do a they do a pro a podcast for sure great show uh, I even tried getting on the network I was like Mike I mean <laughs> you, know, you 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 sound pro this sounds like a pro show come on over man and uh, you know i've got advertising so we we can't like curse right and mike's like listen man <laughs> you know he's like i get it and i'm thinking about it right but here's the thing if i drop the cursing that's where it starts right mm. oh like, yeah I can't. you know he's like I can't. it's not it's like we don't have to curse right but i want to do what i want to do and that's the beauty of the show and i was like I mean, and their, and their, yeah. their comedy isn't just cursing. It's a right. tenfold of cursing. Dude. But it, it, it <laughs> he has his own style. Like, it's funny because he's got this really yeah. mellow broadcast voice and he can, he doesn't really get too excited about anything. All of a sudden, he drops an Alex Jones sound bite on you that's just <laughs> cracked out. You know? That's, that's a good show. Yeah. He's been yeah. with it for a long time. Yeah, man, they've been and at it for uh, over 10 years. Like, he's yeah. been going at it for a while. It's evolved a lot, I think. Yeah. yeah, like over the time. If you ever hear his backstory with the show, it's pretty wild. But yeah, <laughs> dealt with the people that feel like they're like they're special, you know, yeah. like in their and they're not, you know. That's it's what do you say? He's like, I had so many people on the show. Like, it's like, oh yeah, yeah well, coast to coast wants to, you know, they're thinking about putting me on as a host. I'm like, really? Who said that? You know, well, who said that? Don't think- <laughs> Like there were some weird, crazy ideas in these people's minds and egos that are just way gone because two people told them that they're the next Art Bell or whatever, you know. Oh yeah, the hubris, ugly, yep. ugly. Mm-hmm. Oh. Gotta look at the data. Stop listening to your five loyal fans. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> look at the data. <laughs> yeah. Well, those but egos. Dude, You'll come up with something, man. You guys already have your own sound. You already have your own style of humor. A lot of people already listen to it. It's an easy to love show. Oh, thanks, you, Joe. Yeah, I mean, thank seriously, you. like, keep working on that. I think keep working on the creative style of it. Yeah, don't stop doing that. No, you know? I mean, I do have some. I, I'd love to get some a little bit better things to to make the creativity aspect flow a little easier on on my end of it, but. I mean, Grim does a lot of the work, dude. Like, he's really good with all that that the the, the, high, yeah, the higher end shit and the editing and all that. Not that there's much editing, like Grim says. But no, there's no uh, editing. There's yeah, just I mean, a little bit just of processing. Putting it all together and releasing <laughs> it, and getting it out to Libsyn and the, the the pod players and shit. You know, like, but um, yeah, it's just. We're just having fun. We yeah, just like, have fun. This is a yeah. hobby. This is a hobby, and if it becomes anything more, that's just icing on the cake. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the best way to look at it. Well, yeah, man. Because I work. I work a nine to five. I work forty five hours a week. You know, it's like It'd be great you know, to do this though for a living. You know? <laughs> yeah, but if I could, st- if I could stop right now, I know, right? And yeah. start all over. I would do what Jerry and Nish is doing. I would go back into altered states of consciousness and mm. make a show around that, and just focus on that because that's the coolest thing like i've listened to just about every one of those episodes and it's those those are cool thank you joe i mean that's the thing that's the one thing we could talk about aliens ufos bigfoot all this stuff but we can't really get involved with it unless we've had our own experience Mm -hmm. but altered states of consciousness dreaming we can get involved with and we can experiment with it 
we could totally yeah. go down that rabbit hole, you know? Right. Yeah. And there's so, there's so much territory to cover with each person because that, mm-hmm. everyone's experiences are so different. I'm having a lot of synchros with these shows I've watched recently. I just finished the man in the high castle on Amazon. I, I killed it three, three seasons in like a week. Jesus. <laughs> nice. I know the way like, to binge watch James. I'm proud of you. I am a per, pro binge watcher. That is it's so all that night. Level. Everyone goes to sleep and I'm like, and I'm on up to like two in the morning watching this shit. But, dude, that is all about uh, parallel worlds and uh, in relations, how, how you can pinpoint these things like in dreams and, shit and what's real and what isn't and what you thought in these past lives. Yeah, it's very phenomenal, dude. Like, and what it, shows that? that the man in the high castle, dude, the Nazis and the, ja- and the Japanese where they where the they one, won yeah, the wars one. and then they, they invaded america yeah it's fucked up dude it's, it's a really full k dick story yes yeah it is it's, it's based off his book and uh it is fucked all up right to see. i gotta watch that now you're dude, like the it's so good watch it. it actually we were talking about it actually in the um, discord in the obdm chat just for a little bit like it got brought up i think mike talked about it like like a man maybe three weeks when ago. are they bringing legion back when legion that's a good one too i think in march or april yeah i'm sick of waiting yeah. like I'm sick of i waiting. know joe it's legion is so good yeah but that man in high cat i highly recommend that be every i mean it's weird because what i was saying in that chat we were talking about about how it's almost making you go back and it, it, it's bringing you back to like history and and making you more curious of that time frame again and like what went down and what could have went down and shit and that's what's weird about the parallel worlds of like, if the Nazis won, what would have happened? And that's and and that's how this show is. It's all about these two existing the the Japanese and 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 the Nazis. Like they the Japanese obviously they own all the the left coast up to like Colorado, like Colorado from well the middle of the country, like top to bottom is it's called the neutral zone, and then from like uh yeah montana or whatever all the way over to new york city it's all it's all uh it's Dude, all nazi watch. it's all it's all yeah it's all freaking the right i'll watch lucifer but now i'm gonna watch this i think up, dude it's so good i highly recommend it i've watched a few episodes of lucifer it's kind of weird it takes really. what it's about sabrina you guys i keep hearing people no, yeah. sabrina's great I've, I've i've i made it to seven episodes of that it's really good there's a lot it, it's I like the the darkness of the show. Uh, some things I don't care for too much, but like uh, what? Uh just the. Mm, I I don't know, the CW vibe, like this SJW is. I gotcha. Kind of shit. Yeah, like, that's why you have to say CW yeah. vibe. Uh, but other than that, it's very dark and very wild and cool. Like yeah, like. Um, so wait, is it actually a CW show? No, it's not. It's Netflix produced. Okay, like that's it, yeah. why I wasn't associating that. Mm. It's just has that vibe. Me, but I watched uh, Sabrina, that new Sabrina Teenage Witch. That's what, no, that's, what that's, that's what they're talking, talking about. about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sabrina. Yeah. I, I stepped away for a second, but yeah, yeah, I watched that whole thing. It is dark. Yeah. Because they're yeah. like praise Satan. They talk praise about praise Satan. Satan. Yeah. Praise God in that movie praise satan that she doesn't anything to do with like saying oh lord like oh oh satan <laughs> yeah oh it's i can't wait to watch it yeah. i can hear it's good it's calling you yeah it's good <laughs> i don't like that God. cw vibe though i don't like that kind of it, it just has unless, unless it. it's uh supernatural you know because oh, that's, that's, i'm a long time supernatural oh fan. that's my I, guilty I, pleasure I've been trying yeah. to watch that here and there uh, Dude, I've been watching for years. I'm still I, I watched. I, I, I had it on Netflix, and I fired up the first few episodes. I was like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Like, yeah, younger. yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And uh, then exactly. it really takes off. Yeah, but now they well, have they it put on in a lot. You know, the writers must be really good because they know what they're talking about, and they put it Definitely. in that format that's humorous and, yep. um, and so you know, quirky. But mm-hmm. the stuff that they're presenting is very tangible and real. Like the magic they're presenting, the care, yeah. you know, how ha- I like the characterizations of things like Metatron and yeah, Metatron the- and Abaddon. Oh. And they have like right. all the old ones. Yeah. More shows than that now. Like Dave Cruz and I had a big discussion about that. Cause he thinks there's kind of a, a conspiracy behind it all. Right. 
to spread, mm. I guess, occultism, maybe. I don't know. And what I was trying to explain it does is seem what, weird. It's everywhere in this stuff. Yeah, it is everywhere. Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, is we talked about all of us talked about this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Like more people are into the occult and conspiracy now than I've ever seen. And Hollywood knows this. So that the more true. they write this stuff into their yeah. uh, material, the more hype it gets. It gets well, you don't think Hollywood like, helped guide it to this? I mean, they do. That's what they kind of do in a way. Is 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 mind control us into certain avenues of thought, and the occult stuff has been very much well laid out for yeah. quite some time. They're writing real sigils from the Goetia and all the different, you know, yes. grim- yeah. they're using real planetary sigils. They're using. Yes. Real- I, I think I even saw some Sephirotic sigils in one show, and I'm like, "Whoa, this stuff's like super accurate," you know. I mean, you got to see the, yeah. in that man in the high castle. The, I mean, just the not the the uh, the Nazi symbol. I mean, you're talking about symbol. I mean, dude, they plastered it everywhere. They had it on, on buttons, on little ends of buttons everywhere. It was fucking crazy how much they did it. Are you that. talking like the swastika? Yes, the swastika. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. everywhere which was i know that like originally it meant something else. i don't know but it's it's yeah. still widely used in india it's an yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's just everywhere like, but, the Nazis but their whole people. belief system in there that that whole like idea of uh conscious it, yeah like they they have that mixed in with all this shit dude it is fucking cool show well that's the yeah. power of hollywood just yeah. like the nazis use that symbol they use the power of that symbol to use it now dude, when most yeah. people see a swastika they don't think about the origins of the symbol and what it really means. Uh, think about Hitler, and that gives that whole idea. Of power. Oh, he's in it. Yeah. He's in it for like a lot, like for a couple seasons. Like he's old as. Really, yeah. the in yeah. the in the Third Reich, it was really just like the department of like the SS that were into the magic. Uh, yeah, there was the, they had they talked about that department, and these were all their science guys and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think uh, our military is into it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think yeah, anyone are. is into the occult sciences that's actually trying to. Um, our base I mean, is a Pentagon. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The sacred geometry, and it's older right. than it. I don't think there's a reason to be scared of it. No, no. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? This fear of it is so weird to me. Mm. Um, because I find it fascinating. So much to do yeah, with yeah. it. I blame well, the Vatican for that. Why wouldn't you use mm. the power of sacred geometry to call in the the natural world around you and the forces around you to imbue what you're making or what you're planning towards to be the best it can be, the most active, the most fruitful it can be? Why? Why wouldn't you do that? Right. Why does that have to be crazy? So they, so the United States military used the symbol from the tree of, well, the Sephiroth, right? The Pentagon, which that mm-hmm. pentagram, that's a lot of different symbols, but in war, it's the symbol for severity in war. So they used the war symbol from that Sephiroth and put it right there in DC. Well, you know? if I'm going to war. I'm going to put on every bit of protective kind of armor, both yeah. physical right. and magical. I can find. There you go. Yeah. I mean, why is that? I don't understand why people hold this against others. I understand the deep, dark stuff when we're talking now, you know, human breeding with the pedo stuff and and whatever nasties are lurking amongst very sick individuals, um, you know. But we oh, see that if child we, blood, yeah. Well, we see blood. look where we see that mostly coming from the the organized churches, yes. the Catholic Church, and. And I mean, I'm not just going to start naming player. names, but we see it coming from the mainstream religions now. No, and, yet, made, and yet people still yeah. yell, it's Satan made me do it. Satan made the me do it. priest class decimated the, the ancient ministries. That they used to be a good thing that people strived for. And as soon as the priest class got in there, they pretty much decimated it, turned it into many different religions and kind of control everything with it. You know? Now there's more the churches closing in every city want, than you can They think don't of. want the common Joe or the common Joanne to know this in, in antiquity. They wanted to keep it, these secrets to themselves. That's why reading was like a big deal at one point historically. Mm. 
And, um, and that was why they didn't want, like in the church, they didn't want to translate from Latin to the common tongues of different places, to English or to Gaelic, whatever, so that the commoner could have access to these, uh, these Could mysteries. not have access. Right. Yeah. So well, there, that was all the priest class. Well, and what's interesting, too, is they, uh, they stopped teaching Latin in the schools. Like, we used to be able to take Latin class, and then they completely took that out. They're like, no, it's a dead language. Nobody needs to learn Latin. You used to be able to learn cursive writing, too. Yeah. Oh, I learned. Yeah. Did, did, they, did they finally do away with cursive? Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. My son goes to public school here in, in Arkansas. They don't teach. They don't even do it. I don't. Really? Yeah, I don't see my son doing cursive, really, at all. Wow. So that these kids, me. when they cursive. grow up, they can't read the Constitution. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's true. Wow. That's crazy. Just don't teach them how to read all these old texts. It was cooler to get a note from a chick. And, you know, when the girls used to pass you notes in class, oh, you could see their handwriting. If they wrote in cursive, you knew who it was from. <laughs> yeah, they all have their own style. Joe, not if you got a note from me, you would be trying to get that translated. Who knows <laughs> the form? You know what I mean? Fucking Ira the girls, They used to fold it up in a weird where you had to pull the little thing. So yes, it was just open. origami folded. It's just ridiculous. No, no, no. no see, it was like a. Good. Kind of girl I was. Wish finder. How do you do the symbols for finger okay. banging and hieroglyphics? I was just talking about those QB things. <laughs> just, the symbols for finger banging and hieroglyphics. The hier- shocker. That was junior high, though, I think. Passing notes. Was yeah, definitely the notes junior. was definitely junior high. Definitely. Never passed notes to anyone. Oh, those were good <laughs> times. Well, it's like there's not even there's not even note passing anymore. It's like everybody gets on their Instagram or their Snapchats. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just send a text. Yeah, they just, they just or, uh, they don't need to pass notes. Like they send a rainbow over to Billy. Over I probably shouldn't say this on on publicly, but I used to like if there was a girl I liked, I'd you know how when you're, you're in junior high, you would just get an erection if the wind was wrong. Right? Oh, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. So I'd be like, "Hey, Crystal, look at this," you know. I'm like, what? Well, <laughs> I'd tell her, "Look, look, look," and then I would make it move, you know, in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You oh guys- and then they'd cover their mouth, and she'd be like, "Do it again." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> Yeah. My girlfriends and I would attack boys and get them to the ground and pull their pants off. And they always God, had them. you were that but, chick. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. Oh yeah, we were <laughs> wrestling with a girl. Yeah. The notes. The <laughs> to see what you're working with. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been caught in a pool wrestling with a girl? That's with the, the worst. Boys? Yeah. That's oh worst. man. <laughs> we were wrestling. Yeah. Swim, swim wrestling. trunks. Swim trunks hide nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So but I remember in the eighth grade, that's what they used to say. Roop, they call me Roop. Roop makes a dick move. Y'all watch this. <laughs> they would tell. So Amy would come over, and be like Amy, do what you did to Crystal, and I'd be like, give me a second. I'd take about three seconds, and I'd be there. Yeah, you know? I'd be like, all right, watch. Hey, take a shower. My pants rise up just a little bit. It's like I got a third arm. You know, <laughs> oh, that's great. It's like a baby's arm that, holding yeah. an apple. <laughs> you do it now in public and you get slumped. Oh yeah, now you Oh yeah, you'd be you'd get me too'd. Yeah, you yeah, get more than that. That's, life was over. Can you imagine yeah. if people streaked today? What kind of trouble they'd get in for being naked and assaulting people's eyes and what? <laughs> the worst streakers. <laughs> Grim. Yeah. Oh, I, I did everyone see that Kevin Spacey thing? Like yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Watch, he came out. Yeah, I watched this. it. I didn't hear it yet, but I know all about sort of. Oh, about dude, it, it's but... it's long and it's weird. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh. it's it's Kevin Spacey as Frank Underwood, just like, oh. uh, dude. Talking I don't know why. In the third person, but yeah, from, from weird perspective, it's weird. Let me yeah, it's very weird. Yeah. yeah, I. It's like, I'm, why did you do that, man? Yeah. Junior high was the best for me. Yeah, I junior- love <laughs> Underworld's devil, devil ham. Underwood. Junior high was like everything. You know, everything was, was cool. All, all of the stuff like girls, drugs, rock and roll, everything you had to look forward to was about to happen or already happening. And the world was big, you know? Yep. Now, like, you I've done it. I've done it all. I'm bored, you know? It happened in junior mm-hmm. high. <laughs> it all, it, it you all, were rocking it. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, man, junior high was good. Junior high was good. High school was good too. Those were good times. 
I'll kick your. We used to get in a fight, so man, like every day a fight would break out either oh, in the yeah. morning or at lunch, you know. And if some dude won two fights, everybody thought he was just Mr. Badass, Mr. Right? Badass. Yeah, man. And two but, buddy that you didn't know just whooped him, punched him in the face, and then it's like, oh, wait a minute, he's not a badass. So you started learning that about rumors and how the word of mouth really spreads. It was fun. Yeah. I wonder if kids still fight like that. Like have like dude, there was always meet up spots after school and shit, it. like certain skinny road or devil's road meet out there and I, fight. I, That's what we had around us. Uh, the other day I said, you know, cause he's 14 and I said, you guys still getting into fights out there. I was there, boy. I know. I, he goes, what are you talking about? Nobody gets in the fights. What? I'm like, you're not smoking in the boys room, passing around joints and yeah. You know, trying to get with the cheerleaders or whatever. No, too, too pussified, dude. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you guys do? <laughs> not so pulling that shit off. School. My son's school lets them use their phone. You ever walked oh into God. a classroom with kids all on their phone? No, That's I wouldn't school. have that. They oh, let that. them use. Yeah, my yeah, they let them take it into school and they can use it like until the bell rings. And there's only a couple times where they'll actually let you use your phone, like I uh, think for math or something. something yeah, or weird. advisory. Right. Or you yeah. need the TI part of it. I would not allow that. Hell, if you're in my presence, you better only be. This is just even being in don't my even presence. I'm never getting that motherfucker. You phone. don't get on the phone. It's rude. It needs to be an emergency. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, people. Mm-hmm. Joe, I I've been meaning to thing. ask you though. Since you something about you, do you have you ever listened to Roy D. Mercer, that comedian that does Roy D. Mercer? Yeah, this is R. D. Mercer. I'm gonna open yeah. up a can on you. Yeah. How, How big are, of a man? feller are you? Well, I gotta come down there and whoop your ass, but I gotta take my nap first. After I take, my nap, <laughs> then I'm gonna come down there and whoop your ass. <laughs> I love when he talks about his wife. <laughs> You yeah, guys, my wife came down there. To she Roy. wanted to buy a new car, and she said she met you, and you said you wanted to show her your probe. <laughs> kind of talk to my uh, wife like that. <laughs> yeah. He Do you calls remember up, when he, this comedian actually calls people up out of nowhere and does this Roy D. Mercer skit. This is R. D. By God Mercer. Uh-huh. Do you remember when the Ford Probe was an actually a cool looking car? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Ford okay. Probe. Yeah, like never. You know? No, when it first came out, it was cool. Yeah, I, was I don't remember when it first came out. When did it first come out? When I was, a I'd kid. say like I, 80s? 80, yeah, oh, yeah, there was like a boxier version, and then when Ford made the switch from their boxier style cars to the round ones, they made a rounder version of it. Uh, nineties, yeah, ninety four, yeah, ninety. I, I remember that. Yeah, ninety four. My buddy got a truck, and his sister got a probe. A full, yeah, he got a Ranger, and his sister came out in eighty eight. Hold the phone here, Nish. Are you saying I sound like R. D. Mercer? Because I'm going to leave. No, 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 no. No, but I give you so many kudos for even being able to <laughs> lay out Roy D. Mercer. I love Roy, Roy D. Mercer. Um, that Rodney Carrington's funny too. I, yes. when I listened to Rodney Carrington, it was the first time I had a panic attack because I was so stoned. Oh, I started <laughs> laughing at the and laughed myself into a panic attack and was crawling outside <laughs> because I couldn't, you know. Oh, my God. You guys have to listen to Rodney Mercer. I mean, it's just so funny. It's so it's so inappropriate, too, which is even perfect. Funny. Yeah. No, Joe, it's not that you remind me of him, but there's, you know, your Southern accent and my good friend um, from Kentucky. I can't get rid of it. I've tried. I love the Southern accent. I love it. But it reminds me of that. And it reminds me of my good friend, Neil Pinley, who introduced me to the idea, who you know, started just throwing Roy D. Mercer skits at me. And that's why it just came up out of the blue. So, you know, I'm I'm happy you know who that is. I was almost going to go to when I was in my early twenties, I was a model. I did commercials and magazines and stuff. I, I had a body and I looked like a decent person. Okay. And my aunt was from Santa Monica, California and her daughter babysits and she might to this day, I don't talk to them anymore, but she babysitted Ray Romano's children. You know, oh, everybody man. loved <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Ray's so funny. I was going to go live up there and they were going to introduce me to him and I was going to, try to work my way through all that stuff. And the first thing that she told me was you need to get rid of your accent. She told me this on the phone before I was going to go up there. And I said, what? and she goes, well, you need to get rid of your accent. If you're going to make it out here in Hollywood, you're going to have to get rid of the accent. And I Not if you're going into comedy. 
And I was like, no, fuck this. I'm not going. Because if my accent's not good enough for you, if you think I'm a moron because I sound like I'm from the South, then I'm not going to make it in Hollywood yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, right. But also like, you know, you hear Ray Romano. So, you know, you think comedy anyway, and what makes comedians stand out are, are things that are um, not, not the, not the run, not the mill type people. That's that mid Atlantic accent. It's that. You I know, didn't the want to go comedy. All the girls have all that shit. That's the difference is that's it's the last stand in show business too, in comedy where you can still look like a real person. Yeah. Yeah. But I was more into it because I watched fight club <laughs> and I started thinking how cool would it be to be able to make that movie yeah. <laughs> to be well, that movie. And that's yeah. what got me into it. You know, but they're like, yeah, you got to lose the accent, son. It is. This is what she said. It is so bad. <gasps> and I was like, everybody loves me down here. I, I, I felt like I'm, I'm about to leave and go to a place where everybody thinks I'm an alien. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, Listen, totally LA's crazy. Have you been, Joe? LA's crazy. I would love to go. And I would just like to go now. But back then, I was, I had dreams and stuff. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> oh, my God. The Hollywood dream. Yeah, yeah, why not? That guy that does Tokyo Drift, uh, uh, Fast and Furious, he's got a worse you know? accent than me, and he's been in quite a few movies. Well, because there's a thing, it, there are real character actors, and they they actually are like real people in the world, and then there's all just like the big, you know, the big milled out stars that are all kind of homogenous. Mm. So character actors, the character actors in Hollywood are fantastic. And you, you know, you know them and you see them because you see them in all these things and, and they're real like, they're like real people and they sound, you know, different regions yeah. and all that. It's like Hugh but Jackman. They hire them for that type of character. Like, they're not just general actors uh -huh. like you. Yeah. yeah. Well, well they're not like Hugh Jackman. Actors. Like Clue Gulliger. Right. Oh, I, okay. Right. Yeah. Tony Brad Collette. Pitt, is a, can play you know, anything. Anything. He can play yeah. anything. He can play yeah. anything, right. But yeah, I, I didn't get to really Actors. I got into it for acting and they put me through this modeling school and I hated it. Like I was like, this is, and for, excuse me if I offend anybody, but I don't care. I was like, when I was younger, I was, I was raised wrong. Right. So I'm just going to tell you it, people I'm wait for it. Go Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I was in my early twenties, I was like, are y'all, I felt like someone was trying to make me gay. And I'm like, I'm not gay. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. We have to put this makeup on you. And I'm like, I don't want to wear makeup. You know, I don't want to wear Are makeup. A little bit gay, Joe. It was tranny, tra tranny training because a little bit? You know, just the tip. Hollywood stars are tranny. And they would tell me to stand in these poses and stuff like, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And so I walked out on these catwalks. I just walked naturally and people started digging it, you know, and that's how I got the jobs that I got but I never scored anything as far as acting goes, but maybe like two or three commercials and they were in Memphis. Why? Because I'm Southern and people, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the demographic. Right. Yeah. It's regional. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, those, mo those modeling schools of that period, modeling schools anyway, were like kind of like finishing schools. Cause basically what they're teaching you how to do is walk, right. Walk the runway. Pose. And dress. Well, and, and make sure you understand you're conscious of the way you're presenting yourself, the, you know, you're conscious of yourself, I think. And right. that's what finishing school kind of does for people. It so, was yeah. kind of cool. Cause they'd be like, you need to wear these types of collars. And I'm like, why? Cause it makes your face look better. And you'd put this type of collar. Your body type and stuff. Oh, you know. it does make me look better. And what's your wardrobe like? And I'm like, my wardrobe, what the fuck are you talking about? Wardrobe. <laughs> Well, you got to have a pair of shoes. You got to have a pair of loafers. You got to have a pair of dress shoes. You got to have at least three pair of blue jeans. I'm thinking, hold the, hold the phone here. I don't have a, I've got some t shirts and some Stussy shirts up in here. Let's see what else I got. I got some holy jeans. Here's one that's <laughs> those choppers. How big on. of a fella are you? This ain't going to do, you know? <laughs> I'm about to come down there and whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's back when West Coast Choppers was cool and everybody wore those t shirts. You remember that? Oh, the West Coast Choppers. Oh, God. Yeah. Jeez. I remember that. Or uh, Ascension. Or was it Ascension? Remember those? Oh, Affliction. Affliction. The yeah. Affliction shirts. Yes. God. Deep for the win again.
Yeah. What it's those few, and, few and far between. <laughs> God. My wife wanted to look at a car. You said you'd show her your probe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One trendy thing I'll I had when I was a kid I'll show you my probe um, if you show me your dart. Oh, right. Hypercolor. Hypercolor? Hypercolor? Is that the one you, where you touch them and it changes color? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who's going to play with my gremlin? <laughs> okay. Hypercolor? Wait, Wait, hyper color. Color. Yeah. That shit came out when I was a kid. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, that was like late was 80s. That was, yeah, like 80s, I was like, yeah. that was one trendy thing that I was like, I told my parents I had, I, had, I gotta get it. Yeah. Like, hyper color and British Knight. Yeah. <laughs> it's was that like the neon stuff? <laughs> I don't know what hyper color is. Hyper color, yeah. Well, it was, it had to do with heat and like you put, you put, it was the best oh, with the sticks. You put yes. the sticks on the moon or whatever. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was like, I it don't was, remember. I remember when it's being advertised. I don't actually remember anyone sporting that kind was of. Was that like rebranded God. mood ring kind of thing? Something like that. It was just yeah, with the fabric stuff. Yeah, like. Mm. But, I always thought I it'd be cool that paint because I realized yeah. back then how stupid I was. Like the, I, that's how stupid I was. That how I was raised. You know, they I saw thought, these, um, these uh, like Chuck Taylors or something. Sorry, sorry. Chuck like, Taylors. Well, they had these. No, they're this is a new version of them though. Where I was just saying about the hyper color thing. If you pour water over them, like cold water or hot water, they change colors. Man, uh, I, remember having, I remember having Matchbox cars that if I put uh, put them in yeah. hot water or cold water, they'd change colors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like gear, British Knights. BK Knights, that was some Walmart or uh, Kmart shit, right? <laughs> yeah, but they were yeah. popular. Yeah. Oh, they were, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you I guys in the trivia, that's hilarious. Yeah, we love that shit. Yeah, British Knights, LA Gear, LA um, Gear, oh, yes, L- remember L- Guess, LA yeah. Gears, the, the ones that lit up. About, the- yeah, they had the Guess jeans, but then if you had the, the like some some dudes would end up like getting the wrong ones and they'd have the chick ones, but because you couldn't really tell, but they had like the different colored guest logo on the back of them. Yeah, my guest was all about Anna Nicole. Come on yeah. now. I remember my grandfather telling me vanilla ice was the devil. Oh my god. I, like, oh, yeah, Lord have mercy. Dude, I had man. steps. You know? I had Wait, steps. vanilla ice is the devil. He might be. Yeah. He could very he, well I be. I think he's a candidate. Do you guys remember the members only jackets? Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like God, so many weird trends back then. Weird trends. Uh, French cuffing same. your jeans. <laughs> then uh, Jinkos, once we got into junior. Well, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jinkos were huge. Yeah, French I, cuffing, cucking, spelching. Yeah, that's all new. Wait, for me. is that all the same? Wait, <laughs> well, you're spelching or spelching? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just throwing out shit. Just saying words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gerbling now. Spelching. Richard Gear. <laughs> oh, Did you do that? Did, oh, that, that? That might be an, an urban salad. legend. Might be an urban legend of Rick, Richard yeah. Gear getting a gerbil stuck oh, in sure. his Really yeah. happened. We're gonna Google it. Down Snopes probably. It's oh, you legend. can't trust Snopes. Oh, God. It is. A, that's the that's the very first Snopes. That's the very of first link that is. I get. Of course. Yeah, it's fake news. There's your filter, right? Yeah. Uh, but there was a, there was an audio recording. If you search Armageddon and Felching or Gerbil, you'll find uh, a recording from a, a radio show that we're reading about a guy who had an accident while doing it. Oof. Yeah, I think that's how I was exposed to that whole gerbil thing. That certainly was my first exposure. Wait, no. Or is it the in the Marquis de Sade, that book of the Marquis de Sade? Didn't read that. I don't know that. I think, I, I think that's where it's an association for me. No. I can't remember the name mm. of that book. Gerbiling. That's cruising <laughs> with steak. That's, that's, that's where we get to. Here's the link to the video. I'll put it into the chat. Well, guys, I was thinking about how incredibly dumb I was in my twenties. Like how no doubt. stupid I was. Yeah, but it's all you. You we learn from these things. We've all done stupid shit. Every every stupid thing that we do, we learn from it. That's yeah, that's the way I look at it. Do it. When you're like yeah. in your twenties, it's yeah. hard, you know. Get it all out of your system in your teens and twenties, and then you just be miserable in your thirties. Oh my! <laughs> shit is backloaded though. Why is that? 
what happened? It's back loaded. It's all back loaded. Like I did it in my forties and shit. Uh, <laughs> Jerry's uh, a late bloomer. Yeah, I'm just bloomed late. Yeah, well, so is Joey Diaz. That guy didn't get popular till he got in his fifties, I think. Yeah, Joey oh. Diaz. Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joey just Diaz. Start, I, I just broke out. I'm not looking to become popular. Hey, Phyllis Diller didn't start her career till she was forty. She did. Yeah. Well, most people yeah. just become popular. I think. I don't know if they're really looking for it. It just happens. Yeah. You know? It's like an alignment. I think it's just sometimes that you go into alignment. Like Phyllis Diller always needed to be a comedian, you know, and it took her till she was 40 to get up on stage. And now we all know who she is. There's a, there's an art to that too. I was, I've read some books on comedy and I was like, wow, they're really, this is like a whole art form. I thought these people just got up and talked, you know, about no, what happened. Oh, man. no, 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 no. That is for real. That's fine. Storytelling in my opinion. Yeah. And we don't have the level of comedians we did. I know we all talk no about way. that, but where is we need Don Rickles? We need Joan Rivers. Oh, there's, we there's, need I, yeah, George Carlin. These, there are some here, but there was like a whole bunch of, out at the same time. What are you talking about, Mr. Yeah. Bean? Mr. Bean's the wait, best. Wait, wait. What do you think about Jackie Mason, though? Like classic, uh, classic comedian would not Jackie Gleason. It. No, uh, Jackie Mason. Yeah, okay, they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't but survive in this uh, in today's Jackie climate. Gleason. Yeah. Okay. So you and I were talking about Red Fox last week, Nish. Yes. Red yep. Fox would not survive today. No, uh, all these guys on would... campuses. You know, the honeymooners, which is Jackie Gleason. You know, pow, Alice. One of these days, pow, right in the Amazing. smacker. All the shit that they were talking back and forth, it just wouldn't run. Red Fox for sure would not run i'm surprised you can find sanford and son in reruns with those episodes with aunt esther mm, yeah it's amazing uh, they're funny they're so funny but it's not the culture we're in Damn. wild i just dropped an hour long uh, a link to an hour long red fox show oh god is it the stand-up the wash your ass one wash your uh, balls I don't know what it's called. I've seen them all because I'm obsessed with them. I actually have a still of a vinyl record, the the Watch Your Falls al- album. <laughs> it's in there. Yeah, I think it's Wash Your Ass. I can't remember. I'd have to look at it. Wash yeah. Yo Ass, I think. This is called Red Fox Video in a Plain Brown Wrapper. I'll have to look, <laughs> Jerry. Oh, okay. Man, my neighbor. Took down their Christmas lights already. I thought you were supposed Good. to wait. No, take them down immediately. Let Grim uh, sign off here. Yeah, we're 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 gonna wrap up here, guys. This has been, uh, dude. This has been fucking great. It's I great love show. you guys. Thanks for <laughs> hanging out on Christmas I love night. You guys too. Yep. Christmas this has been time. awesome. Thanks awesome. for inviting. Hanging with family. Oh, anytime, Joe. Anytime, I knew you know you you weren't going live tonight, so it's a good uh good opportunity to get good you break on. for you too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just come oh, shoot the shit. Jerry Nish. See you guys next week on Nox Mente. Woo! Oh, it's going to be a blast. Right. Right. A week from Wednesday. Yeah, week from Wednesday. Wednesday. I need a picture of you. Oh, James, I think you I, might have some. Uh, we better have sure, a loincloth. If you guys have to Photoshop it. Yeah, oh, I, could, I'll, I, could, <laughs> oh, I could take a custom picture. We could do that. We make it work. I want you in a loincloth on our, on our thing. Have your bed sheet. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll, I'll do that for you, Nish. Shoulder. People are gonna be like, "What the fuck? Yeah, who is this well, guy?" We get him on. Well, I'll, I'll explain it. I mean, what? I sexually harass him anyway, so, <laughs> so Just, you can't we'll you can't sexually him. harass the willingness. <laughs> I know. You as a grim steak <laughs> of the butcher. Yeah, in a long time. Uh, so yeah, well yeah, thanks guys for listening. No, thanks Great for time. Us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, any oh, you guys? Yeah, love you guys. So signing off now. Uh, oh, yeah, Joe. Oh yeah, Fine. Joe Roop. Uh, Joe Roop, plug your show. Everybody knows Nox Monday. Jerry's on weekly. Talk about it, Jerry. That's uh, Lighting the Void. Lighting the Void. It's an incredibly dumb name, but it works out for me. It's great. Lighting great show. Void. Yeah, it's a great show. I love it. Boom goes the dynamite. There it is. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye bye. Have yourself. A merry little Christmas. Let 
your heart be light From now on the troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be